All right, who would like to start us off? Now go on then. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to share. It's um it's all open. Yeah. And if you want to share a video, make sure when you go hit share screen to to um make sure the sound in the bottom left quadrant it'll it'll have a little box to check for sound. Mm -hmm. Oh, which way around are we? There. Do I make there? Okay. I've got a couple of things actually. Okay. We'll start with this. This was uh, what you asked us to do on Friday. Return to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So it's this was a very nice. Um, code table to do. So the access term here, hope everybody can see it. It's in First Kings 21 11 to it's, Second Kings. We don't see anything yet. All we see is your desktop and some files. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You should be seeing it. Why yeah. can't you see this? No, can't see it. No? Okay. Let me wonder why. I might have to, where the video is, I might have to redo this. I had the video ready. Can you see that now? No, you're probably going to have to stop sharing your desktop and, and share again, because we're seeing your desktop um, in your pictures. Yeah. Now, it says participants can now see your application. Yay, I can. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Ah, right. So it's um, from in First Kings twenty one eleven to Second Kings eight twenty one. Skip of nine hundred and forty three. Uh, so return to me. So return to me here. Access term. Um, I've written it out in Hebrew. So in return to me, going through there is Elul, which is now what the, the month of, the, with this new moon, we are now in the month of Elul, the uh, time of the 40 days. If you remember the other table that I did about um, Jonah going to Nineveh and that he went to Nineveh on the first day of Elul and told them that um, there was 40 days for them to repent. So this is all about a time of returning to Yahuwah and repenting, looking at what we've um, sort of done and who might have hurt us and who we might have hurt and um, apologizing, saying sorry, telling other people that we are sorry and getting ourselves ready basically for Yom Kippurim for the day of atonement. So it usually begins the 40 days to the day of atonement. So here we have uh, Yahuwah, um, the days, the days of Yahuwah return and Elul there. Here's a palindrome the yod hey, uh, hey yod and life sits on there quite nicely and going through that too we have call you and i'll come back to that in a minute <clears throat> um upright ones here's upright ones we have um sh shira here by upright ones, which means to free, to separate. This spelling for men is for mankind. And there's another palindrome coming down here. Yod, hey, wa. No, it's not a palindrome. No, it's not even that, is it? Anyway, I'll come to that in a minute. So we have and he wipes out 
here in this purple and shall rest here, humble, coming up here. This is and shall rest along here, along the upright ones. And you return here, return and repent the sin along here, call you along the yod hey wa hey yod so Yahuwah is calling us to life. So all of comes along here. Um, another spelling for sin. I've got two spellings for sin. The pay, shin and I in. And the men iron and lamid and here we have coming all the way down in the name of me seek you seek you in the name of me and face is here seek my face so basically it says call you um, chosen and shall rest and you return and he wipes out all of sin. So this reminded me of, and most of the words are there, in Second Chronicles 7.14, where it says, and I'm going to read from the interlinear scripture, uh, when my people upon whom my name has been called are submissive and pray and seek my face and turn back from their evil ways, then I shall hear from the heavens, I shall pardon their sin, and I shall heal their land. That's what the terms that are in this code table reminded me of. So going back to the number 40, it's mentioned 146 times in the Bible, and most often refers to a period of testing or trial. Mm. And we know about that at the moment. A few examples, Yeshua, fasted for 40 days in the Judean wilderness following his mikvah baptism by John. The Hebrews wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, Numbers 14, 33 to 34. Moses, Moshe, tended sheep for 40 years for his father-in-law, Jethro, before he was called to lead the Israel nation from captivity in Egypt. He also fasted on two separate occasions on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights while, while receiving the Torah from Yahuwah, Exodus 24, 18 and 34, 1 to 28. And Jonah, as I've said, gave the people of Nineveh a 40 day warning. Then Jonah began to go through the city one day's walk and he cried out and said, Yet 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown, Jonah 3, 4. In this case, the 40 days was a period of warning that allowed the people of Nineveh to repent and turn from their evil ways. In Noah's day, during the flood, the waters poured out for 40 days and 40 nights, judging the people of the earth. And both Moses and Yeshua fasted for 40 days as they communed with Yahuwah during times of testing, the 40 years spent by the Israelites in the wilderness was a judgment of Yahuwah and the time of testing. Yeah, so also in here, I, just, I was blown away by this. We've got yod Hey, wah Hey, and Mark out in here goes into the actual name of Yahuwah. I thought that was quite cool because it says, um, in the name of me, upright ones, the mark, and the mark is actually in the name there of Yahuwah. So I thought that was quite cool. So I don't know who else has finished theirs, if you've got on the return to me. That's my one. 
Did you have another one you wanted to share? What you want to share right now? Sure, you're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, you're going to have to bear with me. We're loving it, Jan. It's all uh, yeah. just <laughs> loving it. You're doing uh, unreal. what you're finding is like seriously. Yeah. Oh, good. That's nice. So, I'll, I'll, this is more like a presentation. So, I haven't ever shared a video, so I'm gonna um, try it. So, I'll get it ready first. Okay. I know I had it ready, but heaven knows where it's gone now. Um, there it is. Hey. Oh, no, pause. Don't play yet. Right, let's try this. So I do screen share. Yeah, I've got share sound. Okay, good. Click. So I click on the video, do I? Yeah, click on the one you want to share. There we go. Can you see it? It's it's rendering now. There we go. Yep. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, now if you watch this, it's only a little clip, but it's going to set the stage for the rest of the presentation. And I was so blown away. This is so wonderful. I was just going to ask, where's the clip from? Well, architect, you sent word you had a plan. I believe I have. It's from a film. It's an old film um, called The Land of the Pharaohs. It's got Jack Hawkins and Joan Collins in. And okay, thank oh, you. Okay. One minute. Both of you go. Can you well, hear it? Okay. It? it is to use the best labyrinth designed by our own builders. A labyrinth? Yes, we can hear it. It's not a low, but we can hear it. I know, that, I know that, but hear me out. After your body is placed in the tomb, the labyrinth will be sealed. Every passage, every foot of the way from the burial chamber to the outer door of the pyramid, Sealed with solid stone. Solid stone, but that would take years, and in that time... No, Pharaoh, not years. Can be done in a few minutes. You are a fool. What power could move stones in that time? A power that Egypt possesses in abundance. I will show you. Follow me. What is this? It is with stones such as this, and others larger, that the passages will be sealed. I asked you before, with what power? Sand. With what? With sand. Wait, Pharaoh. If the boy can lure that stone precisely into place using only one hand, will you believe me? I did believe in you once, architect. If this is a joke, you and your people will regret it. Center, lure the stone. <laughs> Same with the larger stones. They'll be lowered in every foot of the labyrinth and others on top of them until the whole tomb is surrounded by solid stone. To enter, you'll have to tear the pyramid apart. Do you believe me now? Tomorrow, I shall give orders to start the work. Okay, so I'm just going to stop sharing for a moment and line up. The other bits. See now, my problem is, is I want to know how they got it up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Can you see this? We can. Love I can. Okay. <laughs> if anyone else. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Right. So, First Kings seven sixteen. Uh, it's all about Solomon having the um, temple built. And in First Kings seven thirteen to fourteen, it says um, he fetched Hiram of Tyre from the tribe of Naphtali. His father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass, in cunning work, it says. So this 
slide that you're looking at now is from 1 Kings 7.16. It says he made two capitals of cast bronze to put on top on the tops of the columns. The height was five cubits, five ama. So this was the uh, height of the columns. Okay. And this was the height of the capitals. This, the, these were the capitals, the things that went onto the top. And the columns were hollow. Okay, so these fit on top. And Solomon set up pillars in the porch of the temple and he set up the right pillar and called the name thereof Jaki, which means base fulcrum. And he set up the left pillar and called the name thereof Boaz, force. So now we're saying fulcrum, force. All right, bear those two, uh, that phrase in mind, fulcrum, force. So 500 years later, uh, says Je uh, Jeremiah, at the time of Jeremiah, um, at, with Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against Jerusalem and built forts against it round about. And they came and they um, broke up the temple, as we know, broke it all to pieces. And the two pillars Solomon had made for the house of Yahuwah the height of 18 cubits and the brass capital upon it. The height of the capitals is now three cubits. So it was five when it was first built. Now it's three cubits. So we're missing two cubits. So how did 41.25 inches of solid brass weighing several tons sitting atop a 31 foot column disappear? And when the columns were broken up, Okay, so there's the difference between three, three cubits and the five cubits. So when the columns were broken up, they knew that the actual chapters inside, capitals, were um, still five cubits. So I found this rather interesting. So here you have the column, the hollow column, filled probably with sand, and there's the capital on top. And the, the base fulcrum system is you um, stand on or, or get this to operate and it, it activates this, which comes down, it's like a seesaw mechanism. This secret compartment came up. This is the arc here. And then they put the arc inside and get it to go back down, activating the other column. And then they moved it down into the place. And this is Jeremiah that's probably done this and moved it into the place in Zedekiah's cave, ready for the crucifixion. And in 2 Maccabees 2, 7a, it says the ark must remain in this secret place until Yahuwah, our Elohim, brings it forth in the last days and his glory will be seen above the mercy seat as it was in the days of Moses and Solomon. And in Jeremiah, the pillars of brass that were in the house of Yahuwah and the bases and the brazen sea that was in the house of Yahuwah, the Chaldeans break and carried all the brass of them to Babylon and the capitals were, as I said, found to be still five cubits. So they went from five to three and then five because they went down inside at the activation. So at the time of the crucifixion there, um, the blood and the water ran down the earthquake crack and the ark was just in the right place to be um, anointed with Yahushua's blood. 
and that this picture is taken from uh, Ron Wyatt's site because they found the three cross holes apparently. Right, uh, I'm going to have to stop sharing to show you my code table. What do you think of that, guys? Isn't that awesome? It is amazing, yeah. Ah, it's amazing. Uh, you've never heard of it before, but and then to find codes on it. Was well, I heard um, I heard Brian Reichman from the Temple Institute actually talking about this mechanism one time in a lecture that there was a uh, just like you're describing there was some kind of fulcrum mechanization and um when nebuchadnezzar was coming into third um uh, it was three waves it came, the third time he came in that was when everything was destroyed and that's when um jeremiah and baruch was hiding all these things so the ark never left jerusalem i believe ron wyatt's story I believe what it says in Maccabees, it's going to be seen again in the last days. But also believe that there are other things that were that's going to be found that Jeremiah hid that's also going to add to um, the credibility yeah. of all this. Yeah. We'll see this thing one day, you guys. It'd be wonderful, won't it? Yeah. So I found uh, some codes <laughs> on, on it too. Uh, there's all kinds of things going on over here. So I've got Hiram, Hiram of Tyre. So I've got Tyre across here and Hiram there. Um, secret <laughs> of Solomon's temple. Wow, this is so cool. Uh, the capital there. And along here we have Jashin. That was the name of one of the columns and Boaz along here. Uh, we've got cubits coming up in the middle there. So we've got capi the capital uh, cubits, the five cubits, five is the purple and three is the blue running across. They're all right on top of each other. Rise of, as in the height of, the measurement of, and arc here. And I didn't want to make it any bigger than that. I felt that should stop there with all the codes because it, it proves what, um, you know, we were just looking at. But I thought it was just so awesome. It's so wonderful to be finding these things because I learned this. Um, we watched a few things a few years ago now. And it's like what you've learned is all of a sudden now you're able to find in codes I mean, that land of pharaohs, I mean, we were still in UK, weren't we, when we first saw that film, you know, but it stuck, that the mechanism, you know, that was a wonderful way of getting things to operate without actually a lot of hassle, you know, you just let the sand all out and things start coming into place. And um, Hiram of Tyre being an Egyptian, you know, it's sort of all coming together there. So thank you guys. I just wanted to share that awesomeness with you. It all is still linked in with the Ark and Ron Wyatt and everything. Jan, what skip is that? Is it 700 and something? It is the secret of Solomon's temple. Yeah, 766, 766. And it's in Genesis 39, 23 to 47, verse 28. Anna, you Thank got a you. question? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't have a code. I wanted to make a comment on Jan's table. The outline of your um, the search terms look like a part of a mechanism. <laughs> really? Shall I go back to it? Let's have a look. Did anybody ever have Mikado? <laughs> no. So, <laughs> did you ever see how they um, had that mechanism? I think John. Uh, Ron Wyatt put together where they showed how they lifted, they made <gasps> that they lifted those things up that would lift the big stones onto the pyramid. And he actually made like a replica. So those look like those those pieces to that. It's just interesting. Um, yeah, it's like levers and angles and yes, push one down, down, the other one goes up. Yes. Subterranean tunnels, even like in your picture before. 
Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it blew me away when I was finding them. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I'll take much more. Oh, I can. Love I can. it. Love <laughs> this, Jan. That's great. I just love being here and I just love doing this and I love all you guys and we're all here for each other and it's just wonderful. And if we can share these things with everyone and get them to come to uh, Yahuwah, Yahushua, uh, and, you know, by what we do, by Yahuwah allowing us into his word like this to call people, to show them proof, I, oh, it's just magnificent it's just awesome you know your life has been worth something hallelujah beautifully said jen <laughs> yeah, hallelujah and if people knew the hours that it takes to put something together <laughs> they go they just pass yeah. my, my my life you know, I've got two weeks of tins I need to put away from shopping. That I just, you know, every spare moment, I've um, <gasps> got to find this. Oh, I wonder if this is in there. Oh, let me find that. Oh, if that's in there, then this must be. And uh, off I go down another rabbit hole. But I love it. I, lo <laughs> I just love it so much. I'm just incompatible with life now, basically. <laughs> we were talking before about balance. <laughs> finding all these levers and things and yeah balance finding balance in life when yes you could lose hours and many many hours and sometimes days stuck yeah. studying in something oh and it's but it's yes great. oh wow that's so true i didn't think of, yeah it's a beats and balances you know wow <laughs> anyway let's see what you've got yeah who's next I've got something, but it's not a table. It's not a code finder table anyway. Do you want to see? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Okay. There's uh, my share screen. Of course we do. Yeah. Um, again, this was something that stood out in their last Shabbat study. Uh, what screen can you see? I've just clicked share screen and it's probably given me, have you got the, um, the letters or have you, can you see, can you see my screen? It's the breastplates. It is. Oh, cool. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Um, I had done this first on the left to this first grid. Oh, gee six weeks two months ago when I did the ancient trees thing but um, I was challenged to add in the Hebrew for the tribes also what I've done now is I've added in the who the mother and we know they're all Jacob's sons but I now have the mother of the child in there as well um what we were talking about at Shabbat study was that Satan has a breastplate and it's found in Ezekiel 28, 13 to 16. And it's a different order. The first two are the same. It's red and yellow and red and yellow. And the colours look just, just, just trust me that the colours are, they could be anything. But for point of clarity, I've made each one a colour. So Pitta topaz is yellow there, and it's yellow there, and it's yellow there. So what we have is we have a breastplate of Satan, plus we also have the foundations of the New Jerusalem. Okay. <laughs> Are you following me so far? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Yes. Awesome. Right. Um, we also had a discussion about, you know, the different namings of the stones and how the, the carbuncle baraketh was simply something flashing or sparkling that may be, <laughs> may be as good as it gets. 
Um, I found another one in Nofek, which is supposedly turquoise, but it can be an emerald or garnet. It means to glisten, to glisten and shining. Um, we know that um, on the ephod with Aaron that the glory of the Ark of the Covenant hit it and the gemstone shone these letters of the tribes. I probably should make those bigger, shouldn't I? Shone these letters onto a wall and gave answers to questions like the very first computer. Um, so yeah, we're fully expecting that they'd be shining, sparkling, flashing. Uh, one of them actually said even fire. Oh, I can't remember which one it is now. Um, so that's Aaron's breastplate. Satan's breastplate, I didn't even realise that this was a thing. And I was just blown away. Um, I can probably show you, pull up the... Um, the, the scripture to show you it's in Ezekiel 28 chapters 13 to 16 and we have the first two stones I've put them in the same order as the breastplate is because the breastplate is supposed to be uh, a copy of what's in the Shamayim what's in heaven isn't it that's my understanding at least anyway so I've put them in the same or in the same setting. Now we've got the first two stones in the same order. Can you see that? We've got the red one and the yellow one. But then the third one here is the diamond. Yeah, hello. Um, it was six down here. Can you see that? I've got in brackets there what it was over here on Aaron's. But now it's the third one. Then you've got Tarshish. And so, so the order's mixed up. Um, and interestingly enough, what we found was that these guys are missing. And Trish, you had something interesting there about a certain person didn't get to finish his collection of his counterfeit tabernacle before getting kicked out of heaven. So <laughs> that may be why the three are missing. I love that idea. Um, this is some... This is part of verse 14 here where it talks about, you know, he was was the anointed cherub that covered. And I kept thinking about the Ark of the Covenant, the, the mercy seat. He was the main, the main dude in, in, in heaven. Um, and Yahuwah placed him there on the set-apart mountain and he walked up and down amidst the stones of fire. Well, if these aren't the stones of fire, I, you know, I, that would be, you know, if I go further on this, look, I might go and do it. I'd like to do a code on something like that. The stones of fire sounds awesome. But even the anointed cherubim or the cherubim that covered, again, would be a great search term and we'll see what happens. So Dan, Naphtali and Gad, are all missing. Um, and one thing that Dala pointed out was that Amethyst, one of the ones that's missing, is actually the stone of strength. So Satan doesn't have any strength. I, I keep thinking, you know, Marvel, Marvel movies and the Infinity Stones here. I don't know why, and I don't know if that's relevant, but it seems to fit um, so that's the second one in the scripture so we've got exodus then we go to ezekiel and then we go to revelations and trying to find a hebrew translation of something in a greek text i even went to the aramaic and in the end i ended up back in the hallelujah scriptures had to completely throw out the translation of the words that they they said and just go back to what is the Hebrew word and then make that that was the only way it made sense so again we've got a different order but they all seem to be there so we're just wondering if looking at the position of each of these if there's actually some relevance to why they're in different positions with these different things I 
yeah any, anyway that's as far as I've gotten but I would like to to now go and do perhaps a code on something to do with all this um would anyone like to see the scriptures particularly this one and sure yeah yeah okay let me show um Let me see, let me see. I did have it loaded, but I went and looked at Isaiah 53, didn't I? <laughs> Never mind. Um, I have to just try and find it again. Ezekiel. Uh, So can you trust me that the what's in Aaron's breastplate has been thoroughly researched and that is what it is? And I will move on to Ezekiel 28, verse 13. Okay, here we go. Excellent. And you know, you can resize your windows, <laughs> so you can put it beside things if you if you want to. Trying to get it so that you can see both of them at once. Not so easy. Not so easy. Never mind. You can make him smaller. No, never mind. So we've got in Eden, the garden of Yahweh or Elohim, you were ever. Uh, you, you, I don't know how that, how to say that bit there. You were, every stone, every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, odem, which is the first one, which is Reuben, topaz, diamond. So we've got odem, pitta, yahalom. Odem, Pitta, Yahalom. Beryl, Onyx, and Jasper. Tashish, Shoham, and Yasapeth. Tashish, Shoham, and Yashapeth. Oh, dear. Anyway. I, I've closed out of it again. Uh, I will go back. I will go back. I can do this. It's just, I, I can't tell you how many hours I lost doing this. And I thought, I have, but I haven't done a code for class. I haven't done a code. But I thought, no, everyone wanted to see this when we were sitting in Shibat study. I have to. They're do not it. lost hours. Not yeah. lost. Actually, I'm just going. I'm just going to go. <laughs> I'm just going to go to the uh, ISR. Um, I think just for just for uh, I, I don't know ease of time. Time. I don't know if our sort of our watches, if this goes to YouTube, if our onlookers can tell where the interlinear is if you need to look at it I can get this to squish down it would be so good no, I'm going to go to there I also wanted to let you know Bonnie that so appreciate the time that you put into this because uh, when we were looking at it yeah like in you know I'm always pulling up what I can find so many yeah. of the Christian commentaries had the wrong tribe yeah. associated with the Don't, wrong do not. stone you, you can't you you have to search this out for yourself 
don't trust me. I, I found errors in what I'd done before even. I'd done, spelt some things wrong and I'm like, oh, trying to work yeah, it. But I think that's what we did in the Shabbat study was we, mm. we, we went looked and at looked it. at, right? Well, and we, we saw that they had like Gad was right, but they had Naftali. Yeah, the missing row. The missing yeah, row. They had, the, they had it wrong. Yeah. They had it wrong. They they had they had the third row wrong. So you you're yeah. missing out on on the meaning of what's going on because whatever research you're looking at, for whatever reason, has been done incorrectly. Yeah, exactly. So okay. that's why so I totally appreciate the time that you took to to yeah. get that right. So don't worry too much about what it says here about what the stones are because depending on what translation you're looking at, they're different. Um, so you were in Eden, the Garden of Elohim. Every precious stone was your covering. The ruby, topaz and diamond, beryl, shoham and jasper, sapphire, turquoise and emerald and gold. The workmanship of your settings and mountings was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub that covered, or angel, uh, uh, it's Kuf, Resh, Wa, Bet. Uh, and I placed you. You were on the set-apart mountain of Elohim. You walked up and down in the midst of stones of fire. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. By the greatness of your trade, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. So I thrust you from the mountain of Elohim and I destroyed you, O covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire. Just love this, you know, here we have the stones of fire. Um, and if any of you have seen that um, video, you can probably try and find again about isotropic stones and anisotropic stones. Certain gemstones have a perfect light. When perfect light is shone on them, they create a rainbow of color um, and other ones do not, they're dark. Okay. Um, isn't yeah. isn't that the one? Sorry to interrupt you, Bonnie. Isn't that yeah. the one that said that um, depending on which light, we mm. think that the diamond is wonderful, but with the other yeah. light, that the which, temple, which, the New Jerusalem, when it comes down, yeah. the light from that will make a diamond as dull as anything. Yeah, and the diamond, and the actual diamond that we know now. Is yeah. actually one that doesn't shine. So that's right. Yeah, the, you know our what they're calling a diamond here is not what they were finding in the desert back there, or what they had on them back there. Uh, diamonds. Yeah. I saw some uh, research that the diamond we know now was only sort of named and sort of faceted in the 1800s. So anyway, that's that's that part. Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Um, and then we go to Revelation 21. Oh, my mouse is just being weird today. Uh, it's got a great big fluff ball in it. I wonder who did that. Oh, dear. Uh, so trying to find trying to find oh, trying to find a um, any sort of translation of or any Hebrew words in the New Testament is uh, painful at best so as I said in the end I ended up in the hallelujah scriptures and I copied across forgetting what they called things because the names of them are just, I'm just concentrating on what we have, what we have in the Hebrew. So I ended up in the Hallelujah Scriptures, uh, 21.19. Oh, no, there it is. And the foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stone. The first foundation was Jasper. So here we go. We've got Jasper. Jasper was 12 in Aaron's breastplate. It's number one here. Uh, then Sapphire. Again, it was five in Aaron's. And in the 
foundations of the New Jerusalem, it's second. The third is agate. Uh, the fourth emerald. And I've underlined the word that they've actually put in the translation here. Uh, the fifth sardonyx. And all I could work out from that was, here's what it said in the Hebrew. It must be this. Therefore, it's what they called, or what we now call diamond, but who knows what it was, sardonyx. So that was that one uh, was tough to work out. And this one was tough to work out. Uh, the sixth is ruby. The seventh, chrysolite. But chrysolite's here. So like I said, you can't go with what they're saying. It's just painful. So you've got the seventh is chrysolite. And chrysolite, from what I found, is actually topaz. So they've got chrysolite here. And they also say topaz. So it, it just forget it. Forget it. I've gone with, I've gone with the Hebrew. This is the translation of the Hebrew. So where was I? Chrysolite, seventh, sixth, seventh. So I've gone Tarshish, then Shoham, then Pitta, Nofek, Lashem, and Achama. So everything's in a different position. Um, and then it goes on about the 12 gates. But I don't know. Is there any questions from anyone? Because uh, this has been hours and hours and hours of work and does it make sense? Are there any corrections I need to do? Because uh, <laughs> it's, it's been a massive lot of work and, and hopefully it's going to barack, bless some people and hopefully it's going to increase knowledge and hopefully it's something that in the end glorifies Yahuwah because yeah unless we search it out how do we know right Bonnie I'm study it might be interesting you know especially with and that phrase stones of fire is just so captivating it is. but to break that down <clears throat> and letter by letter like you know do a little Ericology and um for stones and fire and because like in the vocab um the about the words that are for inheritance like in land portions there might be some kind of connection there because the word stone you know like we were just talking about before casting yeah. of the lots right it might show something about i don't know there just seems to be a connection because they each inherit a portion and the stones represent the casting of lots and the, you know, that, yeah. that might be very, very interesting, you know, to break the word down to the paleo each letter and see all the connections there. Oh dear. I can't, I can't use in, I'm in Excel. I can't use the symbol equal without it wanting to do a formula. So the other thing we worked out in the Shabbat study was that in Aaron's breastplate, there is no het and there is no tet. And that um, translates to sin. So in here, there is no sin. It's set up perfectly that there is no sin, which I thought was just brilliant. And also, there's no kuf and no, no zadi. And that translates to destruction. So there's no sin and there's no destruction here. Isn't that amazing? No chet, no tet, no kuf and no zad. I don't know, is that big enough for you to see where I'm working at here? I just thought that was astounding. And I'll just add that in. Oh, you think that is? Uh, because it's perfect and it's of Yahweh and he is, he is, you know, there is no sin and it's destruction only comes with cursing. So. I, that's Amazing. As, um, as good as. On this. It, well, it was Dala. It was, 
a lot a lot of the sort of the extra sort of flourishes on this were Dala. So thank you, Dala, for for sharing with us in the Shabbat study on on this because it was like, what the I have to go and search this out now. Anyway, that's that's it. I'll post a PDF of it over in um, Discord if you want to copy people. Yeah, I'll make sure she sees this class so she can see this. Yeah. Very good. Anybody else got code? I have a code, Lonnie. I have a code, Jonathan. So okay. do you forgive me for not having a code, people? <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Oh, dear. Sure, Cynthia. What are you working right. on? Uh, the code I have is a revisit that I started in June. It's okay. uh, Poison VX. I had to break it down into four different pages because it was just so many characters in there that it was hard to see. Nice. So I broke it down into subject matters. The first subject matter will be the actors. So let me pull up that table. Very good. All right, can you see the actors table? Yes, we can. All right, yep. I had this table. Um, the axis of my tables always run straight down the middle in red. So that'll be on every page, the line in the center. So I had this one and then I was watching a video today and it reminded me of a character that we don't see anymore on the scene, our ex-president. So I thought, oh, I need to see if he is in this table and he may be part of it. And sure enough, he did show up. So I redid this page. So let me pull up page two, which is, here it is, 2.0. All right. So here he shows up at the very top. We have Barack and Obama running through Gates, Fauci, and Bill. Now, if I was going to add these to the table, you said to me, he's in this table. Where would you put him? This is exactly where I would put him. The name Barak means uh, lightning in Hebrew. It's H1300. And here he is at the top of the code, falling as lightning. And then also being a character, he's entered twined with Fauci and Bill. So he landed perfectly where he should have landed in the table. So I'm Cynthia, yes. Cynthia, if you've changed from a one table to the second table, you well, have you to maybe you leave screen share because we can just only ah, see the first okay. table. All right. I'm gonna have I to have... do the the stop share then and do yeah. a, new, a new share. Yeah. All right, well, now you get to see where he, he falls in the actual table. Let's see. He is. No, 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 no. Uh, yes, here. All right, how about this? It says actors 2.0. Yep, that's it. All right, there he is right at the top. Uh, falling as lightning, which is what Barack means in Hebrew, H1300. And also running through the other actors or characters in this topic. All right, so that was page one. Now I'd like to go to page two. So I'm gonna stop sharing this one and go to page two. Stop share. And I got my page. Here, probably this one. Yes. All right, you should be seeing page two and at the top it says components. Running down the center is the access. There we have the word protein. Can't and... see it yet. No? No. It's on, my, it's on mine. Let me try to reshare. No, not that one. Mm, no, not that one. I can see it now, page three. All right, I want page two. So that was, this is a redo. Um, 
probably this one. All right, this should be page two and it says components at the top. No, it's page three, bad news. <laughs> All right. This is up stop here. here. There you go. All right. I've pulled up another page. Do you see components yet? Not yet. Oh, you need, to, need to share. Yeah. Uh, hit right, the share let's... button again. All right. Share screen. That's it. All right. Do you That's see components? It. Yes, we yes. see it. Yes. Oh, finally. Okay. We'll get through this. Components page two. Access runs through the center as usual. We have protein, spike protein. Uh, blackness, people were reporting um, black fungus, black uh, fingers and toes and amputations. Uh, magnetism, magnetic is in there. Frequencies is in there as in electronic frequencies. Transmission is in there as in an electronic transmission. Fetal and Nephilim. And I put the word cure there also. It's real tiny between blackness and magnet. It actually belongs on a different page, but it's in there. All right, so I want to share page three next. So I'm going to stop share this one and find page three. Hopefully it's this one. All right, do you see the bad news page, page three? No, not yet. Okay. Okay, I hit share screen and page three. Any any luck on that one? Yes. Yes, it's showing. It says voice effects bad news page three. Yes. Perfect. Bad news page page three. Uh, running vertical right next to the access, almost touching it practically. It's just um, one letter away. Is It says, you are fearing. Uh, we have delta running into the access, plague, sickness, beast, and serpent intersect on the bottom. And then uh, the mark is there as in the mark in Revelations. And a new thing that I added was 666 and Corona. And those come together and form almost a needle coming off of the mark, which is pretty creepy. All right, and I'd like to share now page four. All right, this says better news, page four. Do we see that? Not yet. No, I can't see it. Share. Yeah. All right, share screen, page four. There it goes. Okay, Yay. great. Yep. All right, uh, better news, hopefully. <laughs> Access running down the middle in red. Then we have um, pine, as in pine oil, quinine, and running through the axis is the oil. We have anise oil, frankincense oil on the bottom. Uh, South America was saying that chlorine dioxide was working and some of their treatments. Chlorine is in there. Hamashiach is in there. Uh, connected to miracle and also connected to the oil. Um, the plant herb ursi, uva ursi is in there. So that was hopefully better news.
All right, now I'm going to stop sharing and share the full table. You see the full table? Yep. Hey. All right. Uh, this is without the new edition of Barack and Obama. So there's, there's two that are not on here. But this is why I had to break it down because the table is just too condensed and it, I wouldn't have been able to label it. So it's better that I broke it down into subject matters. All right. And then the last, I'd like to share the report. And let me find that Full table. Oh, I don't see the report. Here it is. All right, do you see the report? Yep. All right. Uh, so this runs through 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and Ephesians. Wow, it's all in New Testament. So all in the Peshitta. Um, on the bottom, is I have this is one of the highest R factors that I've ever gotten on a table. It's 8.25. And the matrix odds, I believe it's hit a billion at this point. A billion to one in favor of, of significance. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. That, that, that was it. That was the complete table. So it's still, it still could be a work in progress. Uh, since this thing has been going on for a year and a half and new things come to light, I can add them into the table and see if new names or subjects are in there as well. All right. So for now, that's the current update. I did it like 10 minutes before class, so I just barely got it in. <laughs> well, good job. All right. Very good. Anybody else got codes? Just may want to share. How about um, questions on your modules or any issues you want to talk about? You guys are just good? Wanted I just wanted to say how thankful I am that, you know, you guys put in so much work. And then when we have a question or something that you're accessible and you make, you know, it's like, I know what it's like to take time out, like you're on doing something and then somebody asks you for something and it's hard to get there. And I just, I really appreciate all that you guys do all the time that you put into this for us on top of everything that you have to do. And so when I had that question with Darla and, 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 you know, figuring some stuff out and everything. It just, it turned into such an awesome time of discussion of the word right. that I said, you know, I was just, just very, very thankful. It like, both of us were having like brain synapse problems like <laughs> functioning and, and sore and tired. And she took the time to, you know, go over stuff with me. So I just wanted to say thank you so very much. You're so welcome. Um, and we try, we try you guys to, to field every question and um, try to be accessible for you guys. Um, we're not always uh, the best at it, but we try. Thank you for that. Anybody else want to say something? I was just going to say good table, guys. Uh, I missed the first one. Like um, I was trying to screenshot it because <laughs> I'm on my cell phone and I wanted the detail look in it. <laughs> so. Um, I was just gonna say, good table at the end, Bonnie. I just popped in. No worries. Right. I've, I've posted it into um, Discord under uh, upload your tables. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that, Bonnie. That's cool. You'll have to watch the. Um, the video. And did yeah, you I'm looking forward to the upload. As well? are, you, Dan, are you, you gonna upload yours as well? Of Your course. Favorite? I yeah. loved it. That was awesome. Yeah. And Cynthia, you too. What I'm about like, the pictures? Guys, you upload want... your tables. Upload your tables. Uh, do you want the pictures too? 
Yeah, cool. Okay. I'll Those pictures that. are like the little cartoon ones that shows the levers and the underground. Yes, yes. That would be awesome. Yeah, okay. I'll do that tomorrow. It was, it was so cool that, like, you showed the first video, and then all I could think of is, yeah, we know how they lowered them, but how do you get them up there? And then you answered my question. So it was so cool. <laughs> That's wonderful. Good. Looking back in history at uh, some of the COVID things we did. Um, see how accurate we have been. <laughs> we did a few, I don't know which one to look at. Anybody else want to share anything? Uh, Jonathan. Yeah. You said that you were gonna we were gonna look at some of your back at some of your classes back a couple of years ago and like rewatch them together. Uh huh. Remember some, last. Some of the what? Was it last night? You said um, we should revisit one of your um, like. That's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking through. Oh we did uh more than a year ago right at the outbreak of it because i remember um i don't know how i titled it i just put in covid in the search box and it brought up six videos i know we did a lot more than that so i don't know which one it is where we talked about um and i'll just have to watch it and see i guess yeah. um where um, we were talking about these tables hold on that I'd found American distress. I don't know why is it doing this. Um, the lockdown. Let me just kind of scan through this. Okay. Yeah. So I think we, if we don't have any other tables to share, I think we'll, we'll you know, look back in time at. February 27th, 2020. And um, just look at the tables that I, I present in this. I think this might have been a, this was a live stream. Yeah. Class. It's a, I'll put it right there. If you guys don't mind. As I showed you guys everything I've got last night on the, um, the video, uh, the broadcast I did. Um, so you've seen all of that. Let's see. You can see this is affecting a number of uh, countries worldwide. I don't know what number qualifies as a pandemic. Um, can you guys hear that? Okay. This looks like a point where yeah, we can see that safely. Fine. Okay. Um, oh, I think 38 is the number at the moment. Yeah, that's pretty much a pandemic. Um, and, and wow, guys, imagine this. If, if, if the R not factor is seven. So this, in other words, for each target one, at this time, each one can potentially affect, affect seven, seven other people. That's how it exponentially grows during this 24 day incubation period. Because for, and it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long to get to millions. Um, that's the point behind the stopping the movement. And a lot of these people were actually tourists. So it, some, you know, stu there were other things like students and, and people who work and things like that. But a large, uh, a large number of these were actually tourists. Um, you know, you see all, all the ones on the boat that are still on the boat now. And the princess, I think, uh, was in the thousands. Four thousand people on that boat, I believe. Wow. And they're all going home to other places. And then guess what? They're not showing any signs now or, or when they left, but 
um, they do when they get home. And this is how you can see it popping up in all these other countries um, that seem to be isolated from the original source. But there you go. It is a pandemic. We're not trying to be fearful here, guys. We're, this is practical. I mean, okay. Um, the evidence is all around you. This is not a joke. I, you, some are saying this is a this is fake, um, or uh, you know, some theories that this is bio warfare. That's very plausible. Um, thinning the herd, absolutely. I mean, think about it. China has a a high population. It's not beyond a government to suggest eugenics and follow through with it. Right? We've seen this history repeats itself <laughs> um now we, we've gotten into the sophistication of genetics crispr custom warfare custom bio warfare right take take some attributes from here and there like from the aids virus the um the any the anything makes you sick attributes right and put it over here with um the flu virus and um, a couple of other things and in for long you got this custom made weapon seems to be so what do you think weapon i definitely think it came from a research lab the code seemed to indicate that by the way let's look at that so this is the coronavirus. So how about that? February 27th, long before it was confirmed, we were already on the on the trail. Table. And right here, we have the word research and uh, the word death that come together with the mem. Uh, but also that resh in research, we have the word Europe. Europe is right there. Italy is also here. You see Italy right there. Iran is here. Skip the four in, in both cases. Um, outbreak. The word moat again. How about this? Imuna is a vertical. So we see faith being executed right now in a lot of a lot of people. Um, just so happens to be sitting right under these chapter and verses that are in uh, Psalms. We're going to read that momentarily. In my name, emergencies. I don't know that this is related to the coronavirus. I'm, I'm taking a guess that it is because we're told flat out in the scriptures in the days of distress, we'll call upon his name. Matter of fact, if you put your name, uh, his name on your family, guys, that's the prescription of the Bible to pray the name over your family. Where, what chapter and verse is that, Dharma? Are you in here? Yeah, I'm here. Number six. Number six. Say again. Number six, 22 to 27. We have call upon the name or call on um, Kira Wayuhua, which is an abacus effect, by the way. That's not there normally. It just has an abacus effect to it. Um, Ulam and cover up come together in very close proximity. So a world cover up. India is vertical. Japan is vertical. America is vertical. Canada is connected to America here. From China in the yellow letters span across. Uh, you heard me talk about the time of distress. Well, guess what? It's here. Look at this. Et Zara, in the black and yellow letters, Et Zara, it's almost a vertical anomaly in here, has an integer in it. Um, that is connected. Check this out. So, Et Zara, stuff with the hay, is connected to the eclipse. That's the eclipse there. Death is connected to the eclipse because eclipses are harbingers of destruction and if you saw the video from 2017 i mentioned just that that this is historically um you can see war and pestilence or pandemics i said that 
in, in the video. And what do we see? World stage setting for war, but we also see the, the word, the actual word in a plain text, very close proximity to coronavirus and war. Uh, that's an indicator that this was developed as a weapon to me. The, the word for innocent blood sits on top of there. So uh, it's a product of nature. I don't think so. It has some attributes from natural viruses, yes, but it is a Frankenstein of viruses for sure. Wuhan is where it was developed. You can see in the black and red letters that span across here is Wuhan. That actually connects to the Axis term. Uh, Wuhan is also here in the black and red yellows, black and red letters again, but also in a conjunctive. We see in the in the blue this is the word for pandemic but it is we can see it's it's imparted in the plain text from yod he -Vav -He, from yahuwah we've got judgment in the plain text with a couple of words that are being shared letters here pandemic judgment and the destroyer which is the angel of death the destroyer in black and yellow letters who WHO here as well. Death is vertical here. Korea. I just realized I didn't say that. Korea. Just about every, well, every every country that I've looked for that has been reported is in this table. SARS here twice. Sharing a letter on itself. We see in the blue and white is SARS. But also in the purple, we see SARS is sharing this summit. Wuhan also here. A letter sitting on war. In the end of days, which is now. In case you didn't know. <laughs> Welcome to the end. Here is judgment to the nations right there in the plain text. So the fact that uh, these vertical anomalies and all the other ELSs come together in this matrix, which was is less than 5,000 letters. Um, it is the Tanakh. Order of the books relative to other texts, irrelevant at this point. It does render a code. It is there. It is about things that we see in real time. Explain that to me. 3,500 years sealed in this book. He's telling us something here, folks. This is part of, um, well, I, I believe we're into seals. There's evidence of that. He talks about pestilence um, and the things that happen because of judgment. Again, we're not talking about the remnant suffering these things. We are witnesses to it. Um, but that is a fact. That's why I said earlier that there may be some who are looking for a, an escape and suddenly realize they are, they are deep in the tribulation. It's a time of refinement, folks. It is not your destruction. That is not what tribulation is. Tribulation could be a good thing, right? It is a processing of grain, of grapes, the grain and the grapes are not destroyed. It is the chaff. So the, the awful things about us is dealt with during the tribulation. Those things that we never really got through. We'll, we'll deal with each one on his own on journey on a different. That's why we're, we're, we'll be different uh, grains processed differently. Let's look at a couple of the scriptures that are here. And I thought it was interesting. Um, first starting up here in Jeremiah. This will be around the 49th chapter. We'll see the imagery that goes on here. We don't remember, uh, you know, look, if grape gatherers, okay, you see the, the harvest time. What's taking place during this harvest time? Starting with verse two, behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that I will cause an alarm of war 
to be heard in Ramah and of the Amorites, and it shall be a desolate heap, and her daughters shall be burned with fire in Israel, and to uh, be heir unto them that were his heirs, saith he will. Hallow Heshbon for AI, artificial intelligence, that kind of kingdom I want to say. For AI is spoiled, cry ye daughters of Rabbah. Gird yourself with sackcloth, lament, and run to and fro by the hedges. For the king shall go into captivity, and his priest and his princes together. Uh, wherefore, glory, glorious thou in the valleys of thy flowing valley, O backsliding daughter, that trusted in her treasure, saying, Who shall come unto me? Behold, I will bring fear upon thee, saith Yahuwah Zavo, from those that be round about thee. Ye shall be driven out, every man right, uh, right forth. And none shall gather up him that wandereth. And afterward, I will bring again the captivity of the children of Emma, saith Yahuwah. Concerning Edom, thus saith Yahuwah Zavahut. Is wisdom no more in Taman? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Flee, turn back, dwell deep in, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring again the calamity of Esau upon him. The time that I will visit him, if great gatherers come to thee, they not have uh, leaves some gleaming grapes. If thieves come by night, will they destroy till they have enough? But I have made Esau bare, and I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. Leave the father's children. I will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. For thus saith Yahuwah, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken, and thou shalt be altogether go unpunished. For thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of drink of it. I think it talks about pestilence at, at some point as part of the judgment. Uh, for I swore by myself, saith Yahuwah, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. For I have sworn by myself, saith Yahuwah, oh, I've already heard that. For I heard a rumor from Yahuwah that an ambassador was sent unto the heathen, say, Gather ye together and come against her and rise up to, for the battle. Yeah, and here we go. So it's war, so it's battles. And what else? Pestilence, plagues, sickness, death. It is the pale rider. It is, a, it is the red horse. Listen, it says, thy, terrible, thy terribleness hath deceived thee in the pride of thine heart. O that dwellest in the clefts of the rock and holdest the height of the hill. Though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith Yahuwah. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth shall be astonished and a hiss at all the plagues thereof. Plagues, plural. Oh, wow. Well. Where are we at here? This is Ezekiel speaking here. So we're sixth chapter, verse nine by the time uh, we've got it highlighted here. But I always like to get a little context of what's happening. Oh. Son of man, set thy face toward the mountains of Israel, and prophesied against them, saying, Mountains of Israel, hear you the word of Yahuwah Elohim, and saith that Yahuwah Elohim to the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys. Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you, war, and I will destroy your high places, and all your altars shall be desolate, and your images shall be broken. And I will cast down your slain men before your idols and lay your dead carcasses of the children of Israel before their idols. And I will scatter your bones round, round about the altars and all the dwelling places of the cities be laid waste. So we're talking about dead bodies in the churches, right? Um, in, the, in these houses of worship, synagogues, Catholic church, it doesn't matter where they're worshiping idols. These idols are not going to save them. They'll be dead before them, right? He's very serious about idol worship, folks. In all your dwelling places, in the cities that shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, and all your altars shall be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols shall be broken and cease, and all your images may be cut down, and your works shall be abolished, and the slain shall fall in the midst of you. And ye shall know that I am Yahuwah. Yet I will leave a remnant. Guess who that is? Who is the remnant? 
those who call upon his name in a day of distress. I will leave a remnant and ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations and ye shall be scattered throughout the countries or through the countries. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations where they shall be carried captives because I am broken with a hoarse heart which has departed from me and with their eyes which go a whoring after their idols and they and it's been like that through all of the generations folks israel never ever gave up the idols and even when israel became the church and that is exactly what uh, many of us see in this as an interpretation of where ephraim has been hiding listen the exponential growth of 7.2 million Israelis for 2,730 years is, is, is in the hundreds of billions. They didn't just walk off the planet. They are the nations. Do you hear me? Do you understand what I'm saying? And the mass majority of those are, quote, Christians. If there are 2 billion Christians in the world, the, there's a large majority of Ephraim hiding in the church. There you go. That's where they are, folks. They are not lost. They're not lost. They have forgotten who they are. That's what the word says. The word says, I will make you forget who you are. I'll make you go into the nations and make you what? Worship the idols. You want to worship idols? I will make you do that. I'll make you go into the nations and do that. That is exactly what he says. And here's what we see in this table. Talking about coronavirus. And he's addressing the idol worship. What do we see that happened this past year with a great cathedral burned? Remember that? Notre Dame, full of idols. Itself was an idol. People would make pilgrimages to Notre Dame. That's an idol, right? You will not make an idol unto yourself. He's very serious about this. What else does he say? Yet I believe a remnant, and they, may, and they that may have some that shall escape with the sword among the nations, when ye have been scattered throughout the countries, and they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whether they have been carried captive, because I am broken with their whorish heart, which hath departed from me, with their eyes, which go whoring after their idols, and they that loathe themselves for the evil which they have committed in their all their abominations. Have you come to a place called broken before, guys? And you've loathed yourself? That's what it's talking about. Because idol worship. It's very broad. It can be selfies. How many people selfies? You find yourself doing that all the time? Do you know that can be an idol? Right? Food. Food can be an idol. We can make many things idol. Anything you put before him, right, can be an idol. For they shall know that I am Yahuwah. And I have not said in vain that I would do this evil unto them. Meaning, he warned us. Where did he warn us? Anybody know where he warned us? Come on. Deuteronomy. What chapter? He warned us. He warned us. It's called the curse of the law. It is the curses of the law, guys. That's where he warned us. He that is far off shall die of the pestilence, and he that is near shall fall by the sword. Pestilence and war. I said in 2017... You can go back. It's got a timestamp on it that the eclipse was indicating war and pestilence. And where are we at right now? Well, we're deep in the pestilence. It has gone critical mass. All the world will be touched by this. They say it's something up to 60% of the world will be, which is very similar to uh, what happened in 1917. Very similar situation. There was eclipses that happened. Very same kind of eclipse too. Seven year period where it crossed over the United States. Exactly the same. Someone told me here recently that there was a, another eclipse. The latest eclipse that we had uh, uh, on the planet was um, over is, uh, no, excuse me, China. Over in that area. What are they seeing? They are seeing the pestilence. We were warned. I believe we were warned, you know, when the eclipse happened. That is historically what they foretell. They usually foretell war and sickness. Comets. Comets is another thing. They usually also 
you know, indicators of, of doom. Usually, traditionally, four year, within four years of a, of a comet being seen in the sky, there is a major war. So, let's jump down to uh, something very interesting, which is right here, the blackness of their faces. Now, in 1917, um, after a person succumbed to the, um, you know, when this disease ravages your lungs, you literally drown on your own fluids, folk, and you are starving for oxygen and you turn blue or black. That's historical. That, that's exactly what does it say here in the text? Right, right in close proximity to the access coronavirus which is not an accident you think all those letters just happen to stack um in this proximity of you know these words in nahum the second chapter verse 11 let's go there with a click and what does it say it's a partial i can tell you this it's partial we can read the whole thing because i think it's relevant it's, it's she is empty and void and waste and her heart melteth and her knees smite together and much pain is in all her loins is a person who's very ill and the faces of all them gather blackness it's like like you know it's like a west west virginia coal miner just black faces no it's much worse than that it is it is uh what happens well the black death that's why they called it that you would literally turn black and it's because you're you are starved for oxygen when uh, you drown on your own fluids um accident that happens to fall in this table i think not i think not we're way past random uh in here way past random what does this say here all right we're in psalms by this point and remember each each one of these chapter and verses that come through are custom to this table in other words i had i didn't cut and paste and put these here it was meant for you to see i just happened to highlight what i thought and you could go line for line folks we just who would be really interested in watching the whole video um, so I, I choose you know things that seem to have close proximity and, and seem to have uh, meaning like like what you see here with emergency call upon my name the covenant and uh if faith imuna chapter and verses here seem real relevant well, let's look at 7850 of psalms he made a way to his anger and he spared not their soul from death but gave their life over to the pestilence and smote all the firstborn of Egypt. And this is making reference to what happened in Egypt. It was possibly, it was a plague that killed all the firstborn. It was very, it was very genetically specific, right? And that was Yahuwah that did this. Now, what are the chances that we're, we're dealing with another pestilence that is genetically specific to a people? Incredible. Made his own his people go forth like sheep and guide on them in the wilderness like a flock he led them to safety you want to know something i think that, that we are for the for the remnant guys the remnant you will understand what i'm talking about with the great exodus but it looks to me like this will happen again um and possibly that people will go to pre-gathered areas uh like in the old days of harvesting um, wheat and grains and, and corn and things they would stack it in stalls all over the field so you would have these stalls all over the world of communities that are pre-gathered and ready and waiting for uh, the final gathering uh, of the the of the people when he sends out his angels to do so i believe that we will be existing in a supportive community type system whatever that means um whether you know the system has has collapsed because of war and pestilence and people are forced to barter and trade and and you know survive that will happen in small communities so wisdom here make sure you gotta wherever you are located that's where you want to be when he comes back right and that you have a support group somebody that you're working with 
um, each each of you should have different kind of skill sets, right? Work together. Form your own little communities and trust in him. Call upon him. Always unite on his name. Unite on his name. That's something that Yeshua came teaching the name, uniting us in his name. So you should do the same. So we will see, I believe, um, like like we're, the psalmist is making mention. I think that's not ironic or a coincidence that we're going to see the same kind of thing. We're going to see a great exodus and pestilence <clears throat> is at the foot of that. Um, very next line down, Psalms again. What is this? 107. And what does it say here? And gathered them out of the lands of the east and of the west and of the north and of the south. What did I just tell you? He sends out his angels to gather us. So we're already pre-gathered. I've already seen that, guys. That when it goes bad and we're in Jacob's trouble, the Bible says, blessed is he who endures to the end. It says that in English. But when you look at the words in the Hebrew, it would have been better translated, he who survives until the end. Okay, so it may behoove you to glean from those words what you will. Um, work with one another, support one another, uh, encourage one another. Um, when someone is down and weak, be their strength and vice versa. And we endure to the end. No escapist mentality. Don't think like that, folks. I love the words of Corey Tinboom, who wrote about it. She was a pre-trib rapture believer. Of course, she survived the Holocaust. And the whole time, um, you know, she was wondering why she wasn't raptured out of the Holocaust. So you're not guaranteed you won't see a Holocaust, folks. You're not guaranteed you won't see a pandemic, right? I mean, one happened 100 years ago, and it most assuredly touched your family in some way i guarantee you go back and look at your family history i guarantee you somebody in your family had the flu and maybe survived maybe they died but somebody in your family had the flu it touched the whole world we're dealing with something very similar now <clears throat> look what it says and they that wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way they found no city to dwell in. hungry and thirsty their soul fainted in them and they cried unto Yahuwah in their trouble. What does he say to do when we're in this trouble and distress? To cry to him. And he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way. That they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise Yahuwah for his goodness. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longing soul. And he filleth the hungry soul with goodness such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of Yahuwah and, con, uh, and uh, con, uh, contem, excuse me, and content, I think that's the condemned of the council of the Most High. I should have put my glasses on. <clears throat> Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor and they fell down and there was none to help. And they unto Yahuwah in their trouble and he saved them out of excuse me and they cried unto Yahuwah in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses there we go all right I put them on and he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death I mean, break their bands in sunder oh that men would praise Yahuwah for his goodness and the, and the wonderful works of his uh, unto his children of men for he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Folks, there's wisdom in that. Can you hear it? The soul abhor all manner of meat, and they that draw near unto the gates of death. And then they cry unto you who are in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. How do you call on him, folks, if you don't know? He sent his word, and he healed.
I just wanted to interject something here with this. Um, over and over again, we'll see uh, in their trouble, they cried into him and he saved them out of their distresses. All of this is by design, you guys. Anytime that we go through tribulation or, you know, the threshing floor in distress, it's so we call out to him. He will afflict us. It, whether, whatever it is in our life that needs to go, and, and we can all do self-examination and probably find something. When we call out to him in the time of Jacob's trouble, which is the, the, the tribulate, the distress of the nation, <clears throat> he saves us out of that. It's not him punishing us, so to speak. He is allowing us to be um, persecuted by the dragon. But he comes and saves us out of it when we cry to him. It's a test. Yeah. He wants to see who we rely on. He wants us to rely on him. Exactly. Yeah. And he delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that man would praise Yahuwah for his goodness and for his wonderful works unto the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. And they that go down to the sea in ships and do business with great waters, these seek the works of Yahuwah and the wonders in the deep. Man, that's a powerful song. They mount up to heaven and they go down again into the depths and their souls is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and staggered like a drunken man. And are at their wits end. And when they cry unto you who are in their trouble. And he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm. And so that the waves thereof are still. How many know that you who can be found in the time of troubled waters? When he stirs the waters folks. He can be found. When you are in distress. You are guaranteed. The word says you call upon him. What? And he will answer. That's what he says. Now, you may have some teachers and pastors out there telling you you don't need to know his name or even calling me a sacred namer and all kinds of other hateful names. Probably going to clam up on that great and terrible day when they have to answer. <laughs> you know, how many know you got to answer for everything you say? Right? The word is very explicit. Call upon his name in the day of distress. How do you know that if people aren't teaching it? And how, for that fact, how is his name great among the nations if no one is teaching his name? Explain to me that. He says that in Malachi. Let them that exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of elders. For he turneth rivers into wilderness and the water springs into dry ground. A fruitful land and you guys are very aware of you know what this, this it's not just in California I'm following this is going on even in, in places like Australia same thing droughts and fires right he turned the rivers into wilderness and the water springs into dry ground right a fruitful land into barrenness have you seen what's going on in California this is our bread and butter uh, what are we, the bread basket of, of the world right there they grow all the fruits and fruits and vegetables for us right a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of all them that dwell in it you want to know why california is going through the ringer it's because of the wickedness of them that dwell therein it's incredible I mean, we're, we're seeing the words of this book come alive all around us when we just pay attention to what's happening barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein he turneth the wilderness into a into standing water and dry ground into water springs and he maketh the hungry to dwell they may be prepared and they may prepare a city for habitation and sow the fields and plant vineyards which they may yield fruits of increase and he blessed them so that they are multiplied greatly and suffered not their cattle to decrease. Hallelujah. And again, they diminished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes 
and cause them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. And you set the poor on high from affliction and make him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop at her mouth. And whosoever or whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of your love. Anybody pick up that word? Whoso is wise and will observe these things shall understand the loving kindness of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. What a way to wrap up a song. So you see there it says call upon or, or in his name, in my name, and, and covenant come together in a time of emergency. Faith at the same exact skip. Faith. Imuna. And so have no fear in this time, but no. It is prophesied. We are told these things would happen. And it's because of wickedness. It's because of sin. You know, we're a nation that sacrifices babies in, you know, abortions. Um, what do you expect? <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the agenda of the former administration, I won't go. I mean, I mean, I'm truly trying not to get dinged for. You know what I mean? All right, so that is that is that one. There's some interesting things in that, um, but it's not the, the video I'm thinking about the the, uh, the broadcast. And they all start running together. After, if you do so many videos, you just, it's impossible to remember where you said something. Um, but I know I made mention, especially if it was in a class. I, I don't think I did it in a live stream, but I know I was telling you guys in class. I don't think Donald Trump's going to be elected again. This was months out, months and months out. And this had, this had caused a problem with a couple of, of students at the time. There was there was three or four that had codes saying, no, Donald Trump's going to be president. And, you know, obviously the heads butt a little bit. Egos get involved and, um, you know, friendships are lost over trivial things. Who's right? Who's wrong? You know, it really doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me if I'm wrong. I'd, I'd love to be wrong about some things, you guys, especially some things that I see coming and I'm just holding my breath going, oh my gosh, we're in trouble, right? I'd love to be wrong about that. But if I'm seeing, if he's showing me something, especially head, head you know, way out and I'm seeing it and I don't say nothing, I feel confident he's showing me, you know, what's going to happen then you know it's kind of like on my hands right there's been a lot of times i didn't share i probably have several videos that i never published um that i just kind of held on to just in case what i said happened because i didn't want to put a bunch of stuff out there and just people be like oh jonathan just making all these prophecies i think it would be better if you if you if you feel like it was giving you something that's prophetic sit on it for a while right about it then, then put the information out uh here's another one this was march 6. um you guys want to watch some more you got questions or anything you want to want to say no i just made note of some of those beautiful psalms and the promises there 107 27 to 28 107 43 but yeah we're just having a bit of a talk in chat about um the black sickness, you've got Psalm 78. He said, very sick, people were very sick turning black. Um, yeah, having a, a chat about melioidosis melio is now in the US and Puerto Rico, apparently. Wow. I don't know what it is, but something to search. We couldn't find mucormycosis in the table, so maybe. So Leviticus 14 talks about how the priests would go into a house that had mold in it back in the day. And the translation with the ISR is plague. So mold equals plague. Got it. Right. Yeah, I wonder if it's a different term that they they used back in biblical times. Set up in the Hebrew or the Greek and see what that that is. It's 14 of 36. I'll put it in chat. In the table that I just did, there is blackness and also plague. 
in Deuteronomy and the curses, it calls it something else too. It calls it something and then, then uh, mildew. And Leah, is Leah here? Yeah. Yes. How are, you, how are you doing now? I'm feeling much better. The ivermectin really helped. Everything's coming out now. But my immune system was down first because of the, I, for two weeks, I said they must be spraying mold because um, I'm allergic and my neck swells when I'm exposed to it. I couldn't go outside every time I did, my neck would just swell up. And uh, so then when I was around my daughter and uh, her family, they were, they were sick. So I picked it up like that but it uh, it was gone in three days because i just kept using the ivermectin and all kinds of other tips that everybody was giving me so thank you guys um, and praise Yahua. we're all better now hallelujah okay guys i'm just kind of skipping through another broadcast i think this one might be the one <laughs> It's got the uh, awesome where we where we discovered it was that we're truly in Jacob's trouble. Um, Rick's mowing you guys. I'm sorry. So it looks like I go through a couple of tables. Something. Okay, so we'll skip through this. Um, just kind of hitting the, I won't go through all of the talking that I did. Just hit the uh, tables. This is a four hour broadcast. So we're going to just kind of skip through. <laughs> Man, when did I ever do a four hour broadcast? <laughs> this has got um, a, a United States in distress. And um, like a, a handful of tables that I was working on. So let's take a look at that and see if there's anything significant that I say, because I, I forget the things that I say, you guys, um, unless the Holy Spirit reminds me or, or one of you remind me, especially if it's the Holy Spirit speaking through me. A lot of times I don't even remember saying it, right, unless I go back and it's like, oh, my gosh. And what date is this one, Jonathan? This one is March 16th. <laughs> It's called United States. Uh, that was just when we were starting to lock down here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think America was just becoming locked down. I mean, remember before that, Trump was just kind of blowing it off. It was no big deal. It wasn't coming to America. You know, and I was following it before it was even on the mainstream news. Nobody was talking about it in the news. It was just China. And we were seeing videos of people being welded into their apartment buildings and stuff like that. Shocking stuff. Everybody here is kind of blowing it off. You know, Trump makes remarks about not letting people from China come. And, you know, then all the accusations came at him. But, right, he was going to lock, right? They were, they were saying, you know, we don't have anything to worry about. And then it turned all the way around on what they were saying. And it was exactly the opposite. We ended up getting locked down. It did come here. It was a big deal. And, um. Uh, we're still in it. All right, you guys, I'm going to kill my audience so you can hear this. Let's see how this goes. Here, running slow. This doesn't look too. clear how's it look for you guys i'm using a laptop it's okay so i had to transfer my files over using the uh, uncovered so far is corona corona is right here and it's also a respectable amount of letters remember each one is like a combination, a number and a combination of a law. The more there are, 
the rarer this is. And the fact that this appears exclusively in the book of Jeremiah, as you'll see here momentarily, um, that makes it even more significant. So America or the United States locked down is, is the term. Let me show you what that looks like. I just found this too. Thank you guys for the questions and for the suggestions in search terms. This actually came from a subscriber. As far as the idea, will America be in any kind of lockdown? So initially, just because of what I'm finding and where it is. Okay, so is here's the thing. Someone was asking me, Jeremiah, it may so not have been locked Jeremiah down at this point. Is, right, it may have been just a discussion. So someone asked me about it. And so I went and looked and see if it was there. And sure enough, it was here. Now we know what happened. We were locked down, um, some more more severe than others, but it did happen. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Exclusive author of this code, uh, as far as where it is. Very small skip, less than 5,000. It is a 4879. Um, a couple of terms that we have un uncovered so far is Corona. Corona is right here, and it's also here in these these letters that, that go across here. That's Corona. In the black and yellow, that is in distress, Bet Zerat. And we've heard of the time of distress and the stress of the nations, uh, which that's probably a good search term for this table as well, the stress of the nations. Um, of course, it is not just the United States that is in it. We're in this together. Will America see the level of lockdown that we've seen in other places? Um, because this is an in initial find, it's really too soon to gauge the level. However, the fact that it is encoded, America or the United States lockdown indicates there will be some sort of lockdown. So uh, I am certain of that. And the fact that it's, just, it's in Jeremiah, Right. So if this was spread across the Tanakh, uh, meaning that that if things are encoded across the, the many books, uh, this is what you're looking at is exclusively, uh, even though I searched the Tanakh, uh, when I realized where this was, uh, I quickly realized, as you can see here, this is chapter three and then six. And this encapsulates the actual table. Right. So if you look, this goes through. Jeremiah goes down through here, 50 something chapters by this point, 51. So you can quickly tell that this is in Jeremiah. We'll, we'll search this uh, as a search term in the book of Jeremiah alone. And so I can show you uh, that it is indeed there. Um, pandemic is also here. Um, again, this is initial, excuse me. So we got so we got plague and pandemic that come together. Pandemic is it's a variation of the same word. Pandemic is in the yellow, as you can see here. Um, goes down. Now we have vertical in the black and yellow. This is Bet Zara in distress, and then we've got epidemic and or excuse me, we've got plague and pandemic that come together. Plague and pandemic. Um, so this is the United States lockdown. All right, so let's let's look. Because it says in distress, I went and searched for that. And indeed, I did find it. Uh, the United States in distress. So my computer is work, it's, it's moving really slow, guys. It's a laptop. Please um, be patient. It's kind of jerky and, and slow. All right, so this one was really interesting. Under 10,000, as far as the cylinder width, we are at a, a 90, 17, so 9017. Uh, the actual axis term is in the purple. As you can see, runs runs all the way down and it is, my cursor is so slow. That is the actual access term. It is on a row skip. Uh, I did find some anomalies that are kind of sandwiched in there. We'll, we'll cover that in just a moment, but I want to I get to the other things that are here. I searched for years. 
Okay. And so current year spanning to 2024, the further out we get, the closer the actual term is to the access term. In other words, the proximity gets closer as the year is is further out. In other words, 2024 is um, what you see that's kind of hugged against the access term there. This is 2024. Uh, this is the current year right here. And I probably should have changed that color. It's kind of dark. Kurtz are moving so slow, guys. Oh, help me, Father. So this is the current year. It's kind of out there in the, in the uh, margin. Um, here, here's next year in the blue. And in 2024, hugging the access term there. We've got Corona. Corona and 2024 is almost in the same skip sequence. It's one number difference. So Corona runs here. This is a plague in the black and yellow. Another obvious search term that, that I've seen a, a pattern with is war. Remember, we've looked for war and pestilence together, going from what I told you guys from 2017 in my analysis of um, the eclipse before, you know, in, in 1917, but also what we're seeing again 100 years later, same exact scenario, my analysis of that, war, pestilence, they come together like uh, two peas in the pot. So look where war appears. A war does appear a few times in the plain text, but also a couple of times in, a, in an ELS form, it, it, twice in, in the plain text in, the, um, in one line, but also as an ELS sharing a letter with itself, which is the hit, the very center letter of uh, is being shared there. The hit uh, is here. So the black and red letters will be war. What's interesting is uh, it's not scattered all over um, the code table. It's all in one quadrant, which is kind of strange. And there it is again in the plain text. We've got it four times in the plain text, three times as an ELS term, which is equal letter distant skip course um virus virus appears down here um, but when i went and looked at some of the verses where this where this appeared uh, this was quite interesting here whether it's just you you who speak uh speaking about something you who will say um when the people looked at the at the devastation done and they asked themselves what you know what did they do what did they do to anger you that he brought his wrath on them so so strongly um, I'm butchering that. Let's just go read it. <laughs> so much for paraphrasing, right? Uh, let me just go to it. <coughs> Excuse me. That's not a coronavirus call, by the way. Oh, so here we go. This is in First Kings. First Kings, ninth chapter, verse eight. Just give me a moment. It's so slow. cursor like sticks when you stop moving it sticks and then you can't move it it's really frustrating all right so chapter nine verse eight is uh, what i have highlighted there this is what it says and in, and this house which is also which is so high shall become desolate this house which is so high shall become desolate everyone that pass by it shall be astonished and shall hiss when they shall say, why hath he who had done this unto this land and into this house? And they will answer, because they forsook Yeshua, uh, Yeshua Elohim, 
who brought them forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on their gods and worshiped them and served them. So the idol worship again at the crooks of you know, the sin, the collective sin is uh, idol worship. Uh, I found that interesting that it's connected to the virus. And you might say, well, what's the connection? Well, if you know your scriptures, um, these things are connected. He said he would bring these things upon you if uh, if if we cling to these idols, and that's been typical throughout history for the house of Israel. And that's who we're talking about, the Netzarim, the remnant, the house of Israel, the Ephraim, who is hidden in the, quote, church. All right? Sons of light. I did find that in here. You can see in, in the white letters there, Benai, or, or, children, or sons of light. Uh, it appeared here. And, and the, the rest fell in the story of the rainbow. I felt that was pretty cool because we're talking about sons of light. Um, of course, light uh, prisms, you know, spectrum of uh, the rainbow in, in droplets of water. Uh, sons of light, anyway, it, it all it, it fit together. Now, to the sandwich anomaly here, um, originally, I, I, I visually saw from my spirit, as you can see there, Mem Resh Vav Chet Yod is from, you know, from the Ruach or from my spirit. Okay, so I started looking for an extension to that. So uh, just above that, I happened to notice the Bet Tav Aleph Yod Mem, which is a plural, pluralized form of cells. Okay, so cells, cubicles. Isolation. Um, you could break this down even further, uh, as Darla and I did. Um, or the Tav Aleph. Um, you know, when you're looking for permutations, you're looking for um, variations, right? Not changing the letter, but permutating them like an abacus. This is where the, the term abacus effect comes from, because in line, right, you may have a sequence of letters. And based on how you permutate those, like an abacus, you can say different things. Sometimes much different than you know what you originally may have found there, right? Um, it's very fascinating how how flexible flexible uh, the Hebrew language is. So abacus effect. That's what we're looking for in these permutations with extensions. So um, finding prisons or cells on top of from my spirit when you put those together because of that permutation and because mind and spirit are usually synonymous in in hebrew um what you potentially have here and think about this guys because even with a lockdown of the united states are you really in prison or is it more of a psychological prison because you're not physically locked down. We just, everything is at a standstill, right? You're still able to go and, and get supplies and things like that. It's, I don't believe it's going to be like China. But when they do this, you'll only be limited. One family member going to the pharmacy or to the grocery store, everything else is out. Unless it's critical for your survival, everything else will be out, right? So limiting movement, only one family member being potentially, um, you know, a vector in this kind of, kind of knocks down that curve we're looking at, right? The critical curve with the, um, the medical field being overwhelmed. So some precautions will be, will be taken, uh, any kind of lockdown. So not physically locked down, but you're more or less kind of psychologically. So I'm, I'm thinking about this um, as I'm trying to interpret what I'm seeing here. So, uh, yeah, so in prisons or in cells, because we got a bet there. Bet is a, uh, is a, a prefix for in, or like saying in something. So in prisons, 
from my mind imprisoned from my spirit right or it could just be two terms stacked on each other not really um, a message in other words so we could have prisons and we could have of my of my spirit or of my uh, ruach my mind if you, if you looked at it as a, a word synonymous with uh, mind and spirit it could be mind I found that really interesting. So looking right next to that, I was, I was like, wow, now that's an actual sentence. Me, et, amats, amats. You guys know what amats is? Courage, rock, sock, amats. Who is of courage? Who is of courage? S sandwiched right next to that. So the United States in distress, prisons of the mind, who is of courage? Corona is there, but also and this is why I look for children of light is because I, when I found who is of courage, a Amats, I was like, oh, wow, I wonder if children of light are there. And look at the, the proximity of that. And it's six letters. It is almost a zipper effect with the Corona word. In other words, if, if, if Sons of Light was, was slid down a little bit closer to the end of Corona, you would have a zipper effect where they come together like this. That is fascinating. So Children of Light, Corona. Will we be walking around the infected psalm 91 comes into play it's a very good possibility why because you're you're marked by his name it's fascinating to me now what did i have this highlighted this is in uh, the law this is also um mostly in the torah i did search the whole tanakh but it is mostly in the torah where, where all this is found skip i wanted to go the highlighted here which is uh leviticus leviticus 2026 20, let's see what is what it says here um ah you should never forget and ye shall be holy unto me for i yahuwah am holy and severed you from other people that you should be mine it's called a remnant we are his. So found that right there um, in, in fairly close proximity to the access term. Still a lot to find in this. Uh, one of these I, I just happened to find today, right before I came on. Matter of fact, that's why I decided to do a live stream and wanted to share that with you because it does appear, folks, it does appear that there will be some level of lockdown uh, in the united states so um be prepared for that be prepared i don't know if it's going to be at the level of china um but it is expected that this is going to happen <clears throat> now we didn't need the coach to probably you know to make that assessment just looking at what's going on so let's be really clear about that. We're not we're not trying to look for answers. The codes may have in, in this, right? We're looking for, for these anomalies as a part of the teaching this uh, this field. So you can see how accurate 3,500 year old text is with encoded terms, prophetic terms encoded. In his work, this sets this this Bible apart from any other any other book on the planet, folks. That's why we do this, right? It's so that you understand is this book is inspired by a divine hand. Therefore, makes what is contained in this the the promises inside contained there. It assures you of that. It's how we know for sure. Some say, all I needed was faith. You're right. 
You're absolutely right. But what if he gave us a way to verify his text, his method? The term we're using now is Ramsel method. After Yaakov Ramsel, who first discovered uh, a connection with the encoded text and the plain text. One verifies the other. It's a witness. It's another witness. Um, so not even predicting the future here, right? No need to do that because we can look at the writing on the wall, folks. The comfort is the father knows, has it in his hands. He's even got promises for us that these things will happen. Um, but I got a plan, all right? It also helps us to understand where we are in the prophetic timeline. That's the other thing I believe this does. As we can see a, a direct correlation and connection with modern terms and uh, encoded text. In time text. <laughs> Let's take a look at something, guys. I wanted to um, do an exercise with you where we're going to look up um, the first term which was in, exclusively in Jeremiah. And I want to show you that indeed it is in Jeremiah. We got a little bit of wind. ELS term, we're looking for anywhere from four to seven letters. Anything more than that is highly, forward, highly, highly unlikely. Uh, just find it's very rare that you would find that many letters as an ELS. Somebody joins me in this, and it looks like JD. And I don't remember this. Is that your friend that died? Yeah. Wow. I don't remember this, though, but it looks like. Oh. oh will you be okay? Right, I'm to hear you now, JD. Let's see. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. It is JD. Dude, what's oh, up? my gosh. <laughs> there was something wrong, yeah. my, something wrong with my. Something wrong with my. I didn't. The volume on there. It's getting crazy, man. They're about to lock down South Beach. They're about to lock down Miami, nice and tight. Can you guys hear JD okay? Yeah. No. Yes, yes, we can. Yes, he's coming through loud and clear. They were saying that, that's me asking, asking on the video. <laughs> oh. Uh -huh. So oh, South gosh, Beach is getting locked crazy. down. Yeah, dude, it's about to happen. That's for sure. Because things are happening here, like they're shutting everything down. And one thing that's not lost on me about this whole situation is the amount of money that these people are, are leaving on the table right now. Like, just think, in our short lives, and I asked my mom about this today, like, none of this has ever happened, not even remotely close, has anything like this ever happened. And it's just, an, it's insane how much money, like, Disney's closed, and I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. So for me, I don't buy, I mean, I'm not saying that I don't buy that there's this virus out there that's that's doing a you know damage on on the world however they're using this as a pretext for something else i just can't figure out exactly what that is whether it's this tattoo that bill gates is coming out with that identifies whether you've had a vaccine or not like i don't know but i certainly think that you know the 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 horses have left the stable type of a thing you know there's no coming back from this the world as we know it is over what do you guys think i think i think there's people that agree with um uh, what you're saying you know he's kind of taken off you can kind of got got the heck out of town and uh you know did some moving i hear that's uh bill gates Yeah, one thing for, for like what I think about is that like there's this whole Q thing out there. Are you, are you familiar with the whole Q phenomenon and everybody's like Q this and Q that? A little. Have you heard about that? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know anything about that necessarily. This is like really surreal, guys, because I don't even remember this conversation with JD, and he's got eight months to live at this point. So, because we talked all the time, and, and so all the conversations kind of run together, and I forget about them, but I, uh, I completely forgot about this. 
He was so on point too. Yeah, you know, just following what people are saying. And I don't necessarily think that there's a bunch of arrests happening like under the cover of the night. It might be. I mean, I just don't know. I don't see that. What I see is that they're, they are using this. I mean, do, listen, it could be that they're pulling out the last stop because nothing else worked to get Trump out of office. You know what I mean? I do think that Trump is, is there to expose the dark and like bring down the cabal, whether he's like a bad person or not, like whatever, man, like he's not yet. You know what I mean? Like I haven't seen anything but him trying to uncover darkness to this point. I think, I mean, listen, wouldn't it be funny if all of a sudden, you know, this was one of those attempts to take him down their final stop to sort of do all this stuff. And then he, you know, ends up consolidating his power over it. Like, what yeah. a joke. Yeah. And that's that's what the meme I was talking about with David Rockefeller was talking about was we need a crisis um, before the people will accept the new world order. So, uh, you know, <laughs> got me to yell at you, here, you guys. Just you're studying just, that. I mean, it does look plausible. It does look like, especially when you look at this the information so that suggests that this is something that's man made. Now, I know that there are scientists out there that are saying that is not the case, but they're also equally, you know, equipped uh, and, you know, have the capability. These are also doctors who are saying, uh, not only that, they're genetic. Uh, geneticists who are saying no this is something that's been manipulated so um you can find it and that's damage control if it was just out there that this was man-made you know whoever's responsible has got the wrath of the world to come down on them right so and i think that's why the blame game started with china Say, oh no this is america you, you did it so whatever the case is it, I, I think it is being used um we're seeing unprecedented um things happen you know amount of money being lost billions every day billions and billions of dollars uh, what will it do to us in the long run um, will it force us to go uh, as, a, as a global um world order very plausible is this in is this in the cards is this is this what bible prophecy is indicating will happen um that it'll go down this route that it'll be a virus and I do believe that this is part of uh, the four horsemen. You know, the seals, those kinds of things we are seeing. So you got to get past chapter four for those preacher of rapture believers. Um, we will see a level of tribulation. If you think about the children of Israel in Goshen at the time of the plagues, they experienced the first plagues. Um, so it was uncomfortable for them up until a point uh, when the death angel came. They were protected from that, and it was after that that they uh, the exodus took place. But initially, when things started to get bad, in other words, when tribulation began, uh, they were there experiencing that. But the worst is that, you know, they were fine. They're, no, they, no life was lost, right? They came out of it. It was a, a trial, a distress, uh, but... Uh, they weren't consumed. The death angel passed over them uh, at Passover. And here we are at Passover time. In the season of Passover now. Wow. Great, great point. Yeah, so. I'm just looking at the chat here. And see what, am I, what am I missing? So, uh is South Beach look like a ghost town? What is it doing to the tourism? Strangely enough, there's more. This thing coincided with spring break. And so the city people, the city managers basically had made a contract with all these rap groups and stuff like that. So they have, it's like an urban weekend type thing for weeks here. So that like coincided with that. So we've got literally thousands and thousands of people with a bunch of closed businesses so they got nowhere to go and nothing to do outside of just about riot like mm -hmm. two blocks from where i live it's actually really frightening um that, that's 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 a crisis within itself when you got all these young people coming for spring break and everything is shut down you know where are they going to go what are they going to what are they going to do 
Um, yeah, there's shootings all the time. I mean, it's it's actually like totally, totally crazy. Uh, not the place that I thought I would be at this point. However, like, you know, this was a lightning strike. This happened, you know, so fast, right? I mean, remember when we were talking about it just like a little bit ago and it was almost, you know, it looked like it was going to do something, but we weren't really sure. And then all of a sudden, boom, up here it is. Now they're going to, I personally don't think I'm even going to be able to leave South Beach within like 36 hours. I think that they're going to lock this place down. Let's put it this way. Not this weekend that just went by, but the weekend before that, my little coffee stand was open and I was selling coffee and people were literally in from Hong Kong, China. There were people, you know, one lady at the booth next to mine, she came in, she's like, oh, I'm actually here. I'm an expat from Wuhan. So, so she was like a, 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 an American lady who was living in Wuhan, you know, because there's a lot of expats over there doing working for companies, American companies, you know what I mean? So that was really striking to me. So that was, that was actually mind blowing. So part of me, part of me is not concerned so much about that as opposed to as much as I'm concerned about what they're going to do to consolidate their power because of the, the, the fear that they're generating right now. Right. I per Listen, this is so leading to everybody giving up their rights and begging for the mark of the beast type stuff like where and it's going to unravel fast. You know, once this once this thing really gets going, it's going to unravel fast. I agree, brother. Um, very quickly, I think we'll get out of hand and I'm not trying to make some, you know, some sort of um, fear. Kind of prediction guys I'm, I'm i'm trying to be real you know real with you um this is not the time to be sugarcoating things <clears throat> you know it's very serious i mean i'm concerned about family that are not here with me you know what i mean like my mom my three sons because i have no control Right. And I think that's probably felt by a lot of people where you feel helpless. You have no control other than your immediate surrounding, right? So if you got loved ones spread across the world, people tend to worry. You can't do anything. So the anxiety builds up. And I think, you know, looking at that code table with um, prisons and, you know, a connection being to the mind, a psychological prison. And that's basically what it would come down to if it was martial law. They're not going to physically come in and lock your door and seal you in like they did in China. Now, they did this in China where they were welding doors shut to apartment complexes. But I do not believe it's going to come down to that. I would, I would hope not. Right. Think you, you, world, Dude, there'll, be, there'll be gun battles in the streets. I was about to say that. There will be, you know, some people go to war if you start doing stuff like that. So. It's more of a, I think, going to be a psychological prison where people are so afraid of what was taking place. That that's they, now, dude. That's right now. Yeah. Right now. People so are people, afraid of an invisible enemy. You know what I mean? Yeah, there are many that are talking about this as a stealth. Uh, this is a stealthy virus because it takes so long to show symptoms that the spreading that's taking place, you, you really don't. You yeah, see now, doesn't that is that suspicious at all to you? Because that's what that's the that's the suspicious part of this for me. Like, really, suddenly there's a virus that takes 14 days to incubate. Like, never before in history have we heard of something like this. So for me, that's where it sort of gets into the whole, don't let any crisis go to waste. I'm not saying that there's not a virus, but like two weeks, dude. Like, wait a minute, that seems crazy, doesn't it? I'm in contact with a lot of people in two weeks. That's that's the that was what makes this dangerous is uh, the amount of people that you can, you can infect. And so, um, yeah, I think this is why uh, it appeared that the president was, was about to break down in his speech is because um, somebody brought him up to speed on understanding the R not value of this and, and what that actually means statistically when you're looking at this as, as, being said and done, right? It's run its course. We're potentially going to see 
hundreds, millions. Best case scenario was 15 million. Worst case scenario is hundreds of million, like 400 million people would would die from this. So um, that, that became really evident in his reaction, I think, is, is he understood that because he was played it off up until that point where he was like, oh, we got this. It's, no, it's, it's just like the flu. You know, we got a vaccine in the works. I mean, he was just throwing it out there and you could tell he was being presidential. He wasn't being forthcoming. When you can see the, the experts standing right behind him, their facial expressions, right? When you start reading people and looking at facial expressions, um, yeah, it, it could completely contradict what the experts say. And, and then he, he did his speech and then I think, uh, you know, it was hard for him to get through it because of the weight of understanding, you know, what, what this potentially means. You know, it's interesting because the table that we worked on the other week, <clears throat> what was it, the coronavirus table? Yeah. Where it revealed the Psalms 50 gathering of the saints and all that stuff. Yeah. For I me, pull that up. what I find interesting about what you do and what your students are doing is in a very real sense it's the antithesis to the fake news for me because i don't believe anything anymore necessarily right like i don't know which end is up i don't know who's telling the truth i don't know anything anymore and i think that's by design so like the only things that i actually really trust are is the word and the stuff that you you know you guys do like, you know, it's amazing to me. So it, it, it's it's really fundamentally important what what you guys are doing over there. So I do I believe really am a, a purpose and a place for code searchers in the end times. And, and the reason I say that is because we found encoded in Daniel <laughs> where it talks about, you know, there'll be those in the end times who will understand and they'll instruct many and some will fall. Uh, and, and, and recovering. Some will fall by the sword um, and some will make it all the way through. But the, the, the thing about it was we found that this was a connection to codes and code searchers. And at the time it was a very small area. I could find all of my code searchers names, first and last names in this little area. And so um, that told me that this field, that there's a purpose. It's just not, you know, some sideshow freak like some parlor trick or something. He had a purpose and design, just like the ephod served a purpose and a function for the high priest. He, he encoded his word and not just this text. We're finding, because we, we're looking at three different texts in our, in our co-programs, that he's more than likely encoded every text that has, you know, succumbed. Some say we're using uh, the uh, Masoretic or you're using um, the, 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 you know, the Syrian text or the Leningrad. What are you using? Because the critics like to throw that out there because their angle is there's flaws, right? Depending on what text you like, the Masoretic text. Um, I think the father, the same one who spoke to a man through a burning bush, if he intended for us to find codes, the scripts are going to be encoded, right? Because his spirit works through the man, not the other way around. So See, I don't think that, I, I don't think this is a battle that you ever need to fight ever again because I think that the people that tune into this are already into this. For the most you know part, I mean? yeah. you're yeah, right. And I think that the, yeah, I think that the people who stumble upon you are led here, and I don't think that we ever have to try to convince anybody that this stuff is legit ever again. Honestly, I don't think that there's still that's there's, there's the, the atheist that occasionally pokes his head up and likes to try to. That's okay, but you know what? We don't need to fight them. Well, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really get involved yeah. with them anymore. Yeah, to... we, we don't need to do that. So you know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's a waste of time to even try to, you know, talk to them. Because they're not going to believe, man. You know what I mean? And maybe they will. But I just find that if they're here to scoff and mark, mock, like, forget it. <clears throat> See you later. Yeah, so this is the same one we were working on uh, the last time. It's the coronavirus. We did find the two witnesses um, with a connection to... Um, the plagues. Um, See, now that that's exciting, right? Like right there, you had a bunch of bad news, but so much good news in this table. So for me, like this table makes me feel good. I, 
almost in a nonchalant kind of way, like, hey, the world is falling apart, but like, look, look at what we can look forward to right now. I mean, that's exciting warning. stuff, man. He, he gives us warning. I mean, we're not, we're not looking at this to be fearful, but, but to glean the warning that he's, he's revealing because a couple of things are happening. He, there's a promise for the remnant that, that's taking place. He says, I'm going to protect you. You're, you're going to be fine. But also what's going to happen with the wicked and what's going to be happening to the iniquity on the earth and things like that. It's going to be dealt with. Um, the shepherds who have scattered the flock. Wow. Pastors and, and preachers of, to, of today who have congregations who have rejected the name, let's just say, because uh, there are many who have blackballed me, won't even have me back on their uh, you know, broadcast or on their you know, to speak to their congregation anymore. And I know it's because of the name. Why people, you know, sh you know, cl clamor away from that as if it's a plague or something. Oh, sacred name, you know. But I think because they do that, in this time where he's restoring his name, you're going to fall on one or, one or other side of the fence. Re you received his name or you reject his name. It's going to come down to that. And so... That's a critical point of the end times when the scriptures are over and over. It tells us that um, in the day of distress, you call upon his name. Oh, well, it's all throughout the Psalms. It says, text, a million, oh, yeah, over and over in the Psalms. That's that all it talks about. Text. Satan knows that it's in the plain text. What do you think he's going to do the 500 years before the end is change the name? And that's exactly what he did at the time of the Reformation around Martin Luther. The, the name was changed for the father, but also of the son was switched bait and switch so you've got this roman catholic model of jesus christ the only name on the planet guys that needs an english translation in other words you wouldn't translate the name of the president of china or the president of russia why because the original is what you call them so why do we translate yeshua which is a bad translation anyway you translate yeshua directly to english is joshua Right. But the problem we got with Jesus is it's being translated from from Hebrew to, to Greek, to Latin, to English and, and so on. It's, it takes many transformations down the line. Only name on the planet. Where a translation is necessary. Well, you know, I'm English. I call him the English translation. Really? So I'm English, too. What would I call the Chinese president? His original name. There would not be an English translation. Hello, the only name on the planet that has to have an English translation does not make any sense, right? I think the also for for me, the original for me, always takes precedent. Think think about for the for me, the father's name is is the one that literally is the big bamboozle, right? Like the whole Jesus thing, I get it. And I understand that it's Yeshua or Joshua or however you want to like go there. But but that you're still fully understanding that it's the father's son that came down to save you from your sins type of a thing, right? So so for me, that wasn't as mind blowing as when I realized like they swapped Lord for Y H W H. Like when that when the react when the magnitude of that hit me and when I read the new scriptures like with his name put back and i realized the power of his name being in those scriptures like there was no ambiguity anymore it was like this is the one above all yahuwah or yahweh or yahweh or whatever however you want to call that yhwh that blew my mind and, that, and for me going through the psalms thoroughly you see it over and over and over again that you're going to be calling on his name in that day you know what i mean Exactly. And it's not the name of the Lord either. In the New, in the, in the New Testament, guys, um, what you have is the apostles, everybody's quoting the prophet. It doesn't say, in the New Testament, it says you'll be calling on the name of the Lord. Many will, will try to superimpose and put Jesus there, but that is not who these people are quoting. They're right. go look at the original text that they're quoting. It's actually yod heh vav -Heh. They'll be calling on yod heh vav -Heh Right. In that day. So, um, 
we got exactly. a problem. That's, yeah, we do. And that's another thing that was mind blowing because think about when, when Yeshua taught us to pray, right? What did he say? Hallowed be thy name. And then you literally ask the question, what's his name? And most people give you a blank stare. Like I never thought of that. They'll say God. His name is God. <laughs> yep. So I wanted it in my computer just so slow. I'm trying to get to Proverbs. 30. Have you ever tried your stuff on a Mac, dude? Have you ever done that partition and done your stuff on a Mac? I wonder if that would be faster. No, I haven't. But a, a Mac is so foreign to me. I, I don't like the, the way it's set up. And Darla's, and Darla's the same. She's on a Mac, and she's the same way. She don't like the way Windows is set up. So Proverbs 30. This is really interesting. We go to verse four. It says, who hath ascended up unto heaven and de or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? And who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell, if thou know, if you know, right? Proverbs 30, verse 4. That was mind blowing, dude. There are two there's a father and there's a son. Do you know their names? Now, that's in the plain text. Satan has access to that. If he understands that the name has power and they're going to be calling on the name in the last day, a, a plan of attack with for the enemy is we got to do something about the name. We'll change this over here to Lord and God. But we gotta, you know, do something with this name over here as well. We'll give them a, a replacement, right? A translation. That's exactly what the enemy does, and it's cunning, and they fall for it, hook, line, and sinker. Listen, I got saved under the name Jesus because that's what I understood at the time. But wouldn't you know that in your relationship with somebody? Eventually, they're going to reveal their name to you. That's exactly what the, the Messiah did with me. He revealed his name to me. I called him Jesus all my life. And there came a point in my, my life where the Holy Spirit moved on me and revealed, wait a minute. You need to look at this a little closer because his name means something. When you change the name, you change the meaning. His name means Yah is my salvation. What does the name Jesus mean? You change the name, you change the meaning. Every name in the in the Bible has a meaning. Matter of fact, there is a code called the names code, starting in Genesis with Adam and Eve, starting with the first ones and going all the way to the Messiah. The names have meanings. And if you read just the meanings, it tells a story. And a very, I mean, it's it's not like it it flows like this story. It tells it has a point to it. it, has a plot to it. It's a story. And that's the meanings of the names, right? So that's another facet of the, you know, the complexity of the Bible. With just the names alone in the Bible tell a story if you read them the meaning of the name. That's that's amazing to me. If you go on YouTube and Google names code. Bible, you can probably find uh, Chuck Missler's done a really good um, presentation on that. There's been a few others that took it a little further, um, but it's fascinating. See, now for me, this is where it all, with all the studying that I've done with these Psalms over the last couple of years, and what you originally, because you actually helped kick off that whole thing way back when, because I don't know if you remember, but I was doing those beach videos and yeah. I thought on blessed day ever .com, or blessed day ever, uh, blessed day ever ch on the YouTube channel. And you were like, you were like, Hey man, check this out. And you told me about the name thing. And I had actually, at that particular time, I had just gone from like the NIV or whatever it was to the King James version. And so I was just, You guys, I've got to stop it for a minute and tell you th th this wasn't planned at all. I had no idea we was going to run into JD today. And I completely had forgotten about this conversation. I remember it now. But we had talked so much. I had completely forgotten about 
this conversation. And mind you, he, he's got eight months to live at this point. Neither one of us have, have a clue. I, I was trying to get him to move out here to, to him and his wife and his little dogs and come, come stay with me and um, work together. And so what he's telling you right now, he's talking about when I taught him the name. And that's why I started yesterday in his timeline is he didn't know the name of God. And I didn't either at that time. And I didn't know that he had that that far down in his timeline until yesterday when I was scrolling down. And I immediately knew you will put me and him together for a reason. He was to mentor me and I was to mentor him. Right. And it was just back and forth. And that's sometimes where our arguing came from. We did argue sometimes, but we loved each other like brothers. And we and we forgave each other as we should do. And. Um, I was really excited when when I learned the name and uh, it was with with Darla. It was through Darla. And I shared that with J.D. And uh, I think it, it it impacted him. And so this is such a blessing to find this. This is like a hidden gem. I, I didn't even know about this. And this is not where I was planning on going. I was simply just was thinking we should reflect back on. And I said that yesterday, reflecting back on some of the videos we did with COVID. Right. And here we are. And I don't think this was just random and by chance and all that. I think you will let us here for a reason. I agree. Whoever said that, I agree. He let us here for a reason. So um, let's, let's, I don't know how long the conversation goes, you guys. This is, I'm just kind of recalling it as, as he's talking. It's just like, it's just happened. Right. So it's so surreal to me right now. All it's right. So such an affirmation and encouraging and timely. It's just amazing. We're, Right. Yeah. You who are still using him. You know, I thought the whole dream thing was just kind of like, you know, maybe I subconsciously knew it was his wedding anniversary and all that kind of stuff. But I, I, I don't know that to be true. I think you who um, was doing something here. Seriously, you guys, this is just beautiful. Just trying to wrap my When I was listening earlier, I could feel coats coming stuff. out of this. And it was like, you know my brain was swimming with that already and then to, to flip switch gears but i did and then i spent like a year doing the psalms every day with the the restored name translation and i learned a ton about this whole name thing right and i mean it was unbelievable to read and feel the power when you said his name and it it's made me understand experience. Oh man, it's so, and it's way more powerful. And, and it's sort of like, if you ever told the Muslims, like, hey man, you guys can never say Allah ever again. You have to just say Lord. They'd be like, get out of here. Like it just wouldn't, there's, listen, our father has a name and his name is above all names. Like that's just the way it is. You know what I mean? And so the, the fact that that happened and when that, when that reality hit me, it was mind blowing. You know what I mean? Like, look at, it's such a hoodwink, the enemy. And then it all made sense. It was like the bully gets his butt kicked all the time by the little kid on the playground because this little kid has a whooping stick and the whooping stick says, you know, the father's name on it. This bully's going to do everything he can just to get that whooping stick out of that little kid's hand. You know what I mean? And it was because that's a good and then to finally, it. Yeah. And so listen, it only took a generation because, you know, if all of a sudden the fathers aren't teaching their children, that's one generation. And all of a sudden the name was over, like exactly the name right. was over. Yeah. So, and, so yeah, the profundity was massive, but it, but you can actually see this whole thing lay out also dude in Psalms one and two, because Psalms one talks basically about this, the gathering of the saints, because it says there's a congregation and then Psalms two, talks about how the nations are raging and they're totally ticked off why because they gather against the father and against his messiah so they know so all these people that are talking like you know you can see the battle set up that we're, that's actually setting up right now in psalms one and two and you can see it lay out through the whole psalms so you know that was mind-blowing and the name is so important that people get that right however like again i don't think this forum and what you're doing is like a battleground 
it's a teaching thing. You know what I mean? So like, I don't think that we ought to entertain in this forum ever like that stance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're here to argue, man, you're not supposed to be here. That's not what this is. What you're doing in these forums, dude, is you're training people to go out and do their own forums. You know what I mean? Like you're taking a candle and lighting other candles so that they can go out. This isn't a place for you to like fight. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, you don't need to defend at all this. None of this stuff needs defense. Yeah, and that's initially where, where uh, you know, what I did was defend the Bible codes initially with, a, you know, a lot of critics and things like that. But there came a point where I was like, you know what? You're free to believe what you want to believe. I'm not going to try to force you to, you know, to see this, but I, I will share it with others who will see something. They will understand um, what's going on here. That's right. I, I, I understand now that this is really a remnant thing for the end time. He, he told me originally when I started the YouTube channel that I was that I was supposed to speak to Israel. Now, at the time, coming from a dispensationalist preacher of rapture believing Christian, I thought that meant the Jews, right? So I'm trying to get friends with Rabbi Glazerson and share codes and share with the Jews because that's who Israel is. But See, I didn't understand who I was at the time. But in, in that, he started revealing, oh, wait a minute, you're Israel. Go after my lost sheep. Who did he say he was here for? His lost sheep, Israel. Now, if you understand what grafting in is, it has nothing to do with DNA anymore. You're his lost sheep, Israel, right? He said, go after Israel. Well, who is Israel today? What you see in, in the land of Israel is not the tribes that were in dispore, that are, are in dispore. They're still there. That's Judah. Judah came back after exile for 70 years, right? It's evident because Yeshua was is Jewish. So the fact that he was crucified in Jerusalem tells us the Jews were back at the time of Yeshua. Judah, Benjamin, and part of Men uh, Menashe, Manasseh. So... The 10 tribes that are in Dispora are there under a curse for 2,730 years. That was up, and we know this because we know when Ezekiel, who pronounced the curse, who prophesied it, was 2,800 years ago. So 2,730 years is when the end of um, the curse. Where does that come up to? 2009, 2010. What do we see? We see a lot of people coming out of her, my people, so to speak, waking up and realizing who they are. And he told us in the scripture, he, he prophesies, I'll scatter you to the nations. You'll forget who you are. You'll worship idols of wood and stone of, you know, I'm paraphrasing. But he tells us we'll forget who we are and we'll become idol worshipers. But he also says... That there'll come a day where Ephraim will say, what do I got to do with idols anymore? And he lets them go. But, but he also comes back to Torah. He comes back home. This is the story of the prodigal son, guys. This is the story of the prodigal son. Ephraim is the prodigal son who comes back. And Judah is the brother that can't stand it. When they see this dirty goyim coming back, to the father and the father embracing him, right? It's the story of Judah and Ephraim, guys, the two sticks that are going to come together. That's the story of the prodigal son. You're the prodigal son, the Christian, the, the Ephraimite inside the church. Not all of the church, two billion Christians worldwide, not all of the church is Ephraim. Let's be really clear, but Ephraim is inside that demographic called the church. And when he says, come out of her, my people, doesn't matter if you're Catholic, you're Protestant, you're Methodist, you're Baptist, you're Pentecostal. It, it is all that woman riding a beast system, the religious system. When he says, come out of her, my people, because they nailed it to the cross, right? They done away with it and became lawless. Come out of her, my people, and come back to the original way. There's scripture that tells us that there'll come a day where, where the people go back to the ancient way. Where is that, Darla? 
when people come back to the ancient way. Are you talking about Zephaniah 3.9? Zephaniah 3.9. Yeah, I think that is when we come back to perfect language, right? In Zephaniah yeah. 3. Right. See, anyway, I'm sorry I'm not like uh, Jack Van Impey, guys, but I know it's there where he tells us um, the people come back to the ancient way. What way is that? Well, before the Roman Catholics hijacked the way, which was 300 years after Yeshua. So, what were they doing before that? Right? You can go and, and find that information. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out, that, that these were Hebrews who were lost. They had become Greek in the Greek Isles. This is who, this is why he says Jew nor Greek, because they became Greek. The Northern tribes became the Greeks. They, they assimilated, in other words, they were grafted into the Greeks, right? He's going after those. Those churches mentioned in Asia Minor in Revelation is where the Israelites had gone up until that point. But since, since that point, since the time of John, the four corners of the earth. In other words, Israelites had, had acclimated and assimilated and moved within tribe. And they no longer moved as a tribe. Don't be thinking that we're going to find a bunch of ish ish. Uh, Ishtarites over here and a bunch of Ashers over there, right? It's not they, they have broken and splintered off into individual families, right? They no longer travel as a tribe. I, I, I kind of chuckle at you know some of the Orthodox Jews who believe that they found the whole tribe of Asher, right? In in the somewhere over in Afghanistan, over in like Pakistan region or somewhere deep in Muslim country, um, where there's supposed to be the whole tribe of, of, I think it's Asher, something like that. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Do you think, he said he was going to scatter them, right? The Jews were the only ones who maintained a society within this world. That's a fact. So um, the same ones with the little curly cues are, can trace their heritage back many, 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 many years. Um, for instance, um, Rabbi Kaduri, many, many people remember Rabbi Kaduri, who, who uh, was very, you know, this was something that was popular a few years ago with um, Ariel Sharon's passing, and it was a prophecy made. He met Yeshua, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, 108 years old, lived in um, what was known as Babylon, but is modern day Iraq today, right? What's this Jew doing in Iraq? I'll tell you what he's doing there. His family came at the time of Daniel in the exile. They never left Babylon, right? Some came back. Some came back from exile. But the Bible says not all of them. Many of them stayed. Why? Because the life was so good in Babylon, guys. That's a good place to be in, in captivity, right? M much like why many Hebrews wanted to go back to Goshen in, in Pharaoh's kingdom. They want to turn around in the desert and go back because they had cucumbers and leeks and melons and everything was good. We had flocks, right? So, just, so they went back. Some went back. Same thing. Um, are you anyway. talking about when you when you talk about the whole come out of her my people stuff? Are you talking about Revelation eighteen, man? Yeah, John. John. Yeah, he, this is. A I mean, listen, but, 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 but this but, is not literally but, Babylon. But, but, it like, gets a little confusing because when you talk about like, you know, the old school Hebrews and all this, and then like at this point in time, and at this point, you know, a lot of things have happened supernaturally. So, you know, we're not there yet. Right. So that, that hasn't happened. You know yeah, what I mean? He's talking, about an he's, he's talking about an angel flying through the heavens. Like that hasn't happened, you know, not yeah. yet. No. So we're, no. that's like, it's, we we still have a lot of things to, you know, yeah. we're at. I can tell you know. a benchmark in time that, that is undeniable. Everybody will know it when it happens. And that is Wormwood. When that, that's the point in time, in this time. And we'll, we'll, the Christians who think we're out at chapter four will say, we're not even here. We don't talk about Wormwood. Guys, I'm telling you, up until chapter eight, you won't realize that you're in 
the book of Revelation is being fulfilled until Wormwood happens. When something strikes the earth, Planet X, Nibiru, Wormwood, it is all the same. This is all the same thing, right? When that happens, all of this other stuff is happening simultaneously. Anyway, there's 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 a plague happening in the land. There's probably war going on at the time. You don't, you don't think you don't think you don't think angels are going to have done stuff and things have happened in the sky before Wormwood? Yeah, you don't you don't see it in in the text. You don't see angels start moving until further into the text after chapter ten, where the where the mystery of Yahuwah is finished. That's when we see we see so things what, as well, it what's, is. What's Revelation six when they're all crying that you know the wrath of the Lamb is upon us? What's that? Well, take it in context of where of of, of what's going on. Oh, see, I think by that point we've like many supernatural things have happened i think Absolutely. when the, i think yeah. i think when the rider on the white i think when that first seal is cracked i think everybody's going to hear that sound that it's if you read that first seal cracking when the rider on the white horse runs like there's a noise that happens with that right like and i think the whole world hey. is going to hear that noise well mm, i think we i, noises I, in the, I think uh, we're de desensitized and stuff is all Does that stop playing, Jonathan? I can see a play arrow in the bottom left. Yeah, I thought somebody was trying to say something. Then I couldn't get my mic back on. So, uh, yeah. So it's it's in the already happened. It's in hey, the video. Hey there, Deborah. How you doing, sister? Hey, Jonathan. Yeah, I'm thinking stuff is already supernatural stuff is happening, but we're desensitized yeah. to it because of movies. What yeah. about Revelations 12 sign? That is supernatural, yeah. and not. To mention that the Bible calls angels clouds sometimes, he calls them stars sometimes. We've seen lots of shooting stars. We just have a wrong thinking about supernatural things. And I think that's why a lot of people are going to totally miss and are totally missing what's going on right now. Yeah, I guess when I mean supernatural things, I mean li literally things that are, you know, there's no, like that the whole earth is going to see and it's going to oh. be like you know insanity but i agree with you i think that that the revelation 12 thing with that whole thing that was crazy and the blood moons i think you know if, you, if that's supernatural then sure but I, what i'm talking about is you know witnesses buzzing around blasting you know it's going to be crazy so yeah. that yeah i'm not i'm not particularly talking about that but i understand what you mean and i do think most of them listen a very few people are awake for what's happening right now like um you know like 10 people right it's this crazy. is the point I think, <laughs> it's, it's point more I think than are, where, 10 but yeah <laughs> where people begin to understand there are supernatural things happening up until this point it could be passed off as natural occurrence or mother nature yada 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 things like that but at this point at, at revelation 10 and in by the way I came to a point where I didn't look at Revelation as a linear time scale, but more of a circular time frame and John standing in the center being really outside of time because all he had to do was turn his head and he can see all of time, right? It's a really hard concept to get to, to explain, but I believe when John stepped into that plane, which was, you know, when he was able to see what was, what is, and what will be, right? He's, he can turn his head and see what was, what is, and what will be from one point. Does that make sense? I hope I didn't lose anybody. It's so yeah, but but, but, but also, but, but listen, at the very beginning of Revelation, it says these are things to come. So when people try to go, oh, this is a flashback to, to when Yeshua was on the cross and all that stuff. No, because that had already happened. So the very first couple of lines in Revelation are like, hey, man. I'm showing you this stuff because these are things that are going to happen. Yeah. And you've got a ton of people. Okay, but oh, it's actually difficult looking... for me and JD, you guys. This is kind of how it how it was. So so this is a, a happy po point because we were we were always like that. We were like study buddies. Um, Man, and I sure missed that guy. But we would go back and forth. 
and, and challenge and, each other. Well, yeah, that in, you know, he was trying to convince me there was a pre-trib rapture based on what he could find in, in Psalms alone, just in Psalms. And I disagreed. I, I, I thought there was overwhelming evidence in all the rest and in Psalms that, it, you know, it, it wasn't like that, that uh, we've got it wrong. So we were kind of both kind of trying to convince each other this. So, <laughs> so this is kind of typical for our conversations to go um, like this. It's, it's a good thing to see. And I'm, I'm so glad I found this um, today. This is so timely. The first couple verses of Revelations, it says that it's not a revelation of the end times. This is what Yahweh showed me this week. It doesn't say this is a revelation of what's going to happen or the end times. It says it's a revelation of Yehoshua HaMashiach. That's what it says. So it could be like what Jonathan was saying, a flashback, flash right now and a flash forward because it's the revelation of Yeshua. Yeah, but it says right after that, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, not things that have already happened, which things which must shortly come to pass, right? That's so we, true. So this is right out there. And I really don't like the uh, King James. I'm going to go to the ISR. So um, the revelation of Yahushua, which is Joshua, Messiah, which Elohim gave to show his servants what was to take place uh, with speed. And he signified it by sending his messenger to his servant, Yohanan, which is John. Um, mm -hmm. So it, he's, he's talked about, and, and this is incidentally, the only book where you're guaranteed a, a blessing for studying this book. Blessed is he who reads and who hears the words of this prophecy and guards what's written in it for the time is near. So that so, word is ginome. It's Greek and it's ginome. And it means things that are to, to become, right? To come into being. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, the cool. point is, so, is that Revelation was, wasn't about the crucifixion or like, you know, Genesis or any of that stuff. It was literally about things that were going to happen, not things that had happened. Yeah. So, but yeah, my point so, about Revelation 10 is this is the point where the mystery is over. And it says here, and he says, he says, I saw a, another strong messenger coming down from heaven, robed with a cloud and with a rainbow on his head, with a face like the sun, and with call in his feet was like columns of fire, and having a little, uh, having in his hand a little book open, and he placed his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and with a loud voice as a lion roars so everybody's going to hear this he cried out seven thunders spoke their sounds and when the seven thunders spoke their sounds i was about it to write but i heard a voice from heaven saying seal up what the seven thunders spoke and do not write them and the messenger whom i saw standing in the sea and on the land lifted up his hand to heaven and he swore by him who lives forever and ever who created heaven and what is in it and earth and what is in it in the sea and what is in it that there shall be no further delay now um in the king james it says here that the mystery will be no more that the mystery will be over if, like if we go if we toggle over to the king james the mystery is complete or something like that yeah here it is do you remember the century interesting God is finished interestingly where it talks about a delay right there right i when everybody was flipping out for that revelation 12 sign thinking that the rapture was going to happen then i was like you guys don't understand like it, there's a delay so don't be sad if it doesn't happen a lot of people were really sad and it's like they don't take into account that that's a big fat loophole, right? That delay. So everybody's trying to figure this stuff out. And it's like, they don't account for like, who knows how long that delay is going to be for, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I see what you're saying, dude. And I see what you're saying, how revelation might not necessarily go in the sequential order. I totally get that. However, I do think that there's an order to it, you know? Yeah. There is an order, but, but it, that there's an overlapping thing because it seems yeah, like John, absolutely. It seems like John 
uh, like jumps back and forth and he, and he reiterates sometimes and he says things in a different way um, the second time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, for instance, like he describes two things that are going on at one time when he's, when he's talking about Revelation 8, where he sees what's happening on the earth and he sees what's happening in heaven. And on earth, it manifests as a, as a physical thing. But in heaven, it's manifest as actual actions of the angels. Like the angel takes the, the sensor and he dips it in the, um, in the altar and he gets coals of fire and he flings it toward the earth, right? So it's, he's, John's seeing this angel do this in the heavens, but then when it manifests, it's a physical interaction with uh, our planet, with the solar system, with people on it, and physical you know, with worm work, work, worm work happens, and tsunamis and happen, into all this yeah, kind of man. things happen based off of something that happened in heaven. That we See, but I think, I think by that time, dude, angels are flying through the sky proclaiming his name. I yeah. think by that time you've got angels. Because listen, again, hearkening back to the table, the coronavirus table, it says that Psalms 50 is going to take place soon where he's going to gather his saints. It says the two witnesses are going to pop up, whatever this all means, whether your interpretation or, you know, whoever's interpretation of those things, the Ramsell method is literally, what'd you say is verifying, right? So, right. so literally we're in the time of the coronavirus, and, and during this time, we're going to have, the gathering of the saints, man, and the two witnesses are going to be revealed. Like, it's there in this code, is it not? And I also noticed that when you put it up on the screen, there's way more stuff that I wasn't, like, a part of. That you, You've added a lot of stuff since the last time I saw this. No? Yeah. Yeah, there's still, there's, there's you know, especially in, in we're, we're the, the original... And that psalm he just quoted, like his was his favorite psalm, Psalm 50. He was convinced this is the, the rapture. That psalm and a couple of others that he liked, all of them are in his table. His name is encoded in psalms. Um, after he died, I did do a table for him um, on his name. So that, that's kind of interesting that he brings that up because he always brought up Psalm 50 as it was this, um, you know, slam dunk that the rapture was going to happen. And it, it was never about that. I didn't believe in a rapture. I just didn't believe it was pre-tribulation. We are going to be caught up to him. We're going to be gathered to him. Um, just not like the Christians teach it. Uh, yeah. That Aaron, idea of delay. The, oh, the idea of a delay he was talking about there, or one of you were talking about. That's yeah. like very interesting because we're all hoping and waiting and waiting and waiting and when, when. When right. the delay is still going, on, still going on. And imagine if there weren't delays. Imagine if this all just wrapped up and, you know, all the things that we didn't ever, never got to, to accomplish or, or finish in our race. Who was merciful, right? And he's allowed us that time for, for all of these things, to, for, for, for everyone to get their house in order, right? <laughs> um, and so we stress about the trivial things. Um, yeah, so uh, he's he's asking about the coronavirus table. We've we've looked at this one today already, but uh, let's let's. Oh yeah, dude, often, it's way more uh, filled in. But all because of you know when I went through and I was just like you know it seems like this this is a relevant chapter and verse that's coming through here. So that's for the most part that's what's filled in is the chapter and verses. Um, and if you go through historically and look at the the other videos that we talked about this, that's what you'll see. This changed most part is the chapter and verses that we, that become. Uh, more evident to me that they seem to be playing a relevant part. For instance, when we found the two witnesses up here, you know, I didn't have this, the, these chapter and verses hit um, highlighted, you know, because we didn't know that these two terms here, which is plagues, right? Remember when we found two witnesses, we look for plagues. Yeah. Two of them appear right next to these two witnesses. But the whole, the whole, what was going on there had context to the encoded text there, the encoded anomaly. So that's when it became highlighted. So um, that's how these things have become, you know, they start take on form and start to fill in, so to speak. Did you try, tr did you put Trump's name into this table? Um, I did. And uh, he, he does appear, but it's, 
uh, you know, it's really not relevant to, to anything. It, it just, just like Obama appeared in tables a lot when he was president, we were looking for the beast and stuff like that. It has same sort of same relevance. Is yeah, know, I mean, it's a marker. It's, it's also a modern just a name marker. Of modern yeah. time, and it does appear there. Um, Where, is there anything that crosses his name? Uh, and I didn't find, I didn't see anything relevant in, in, and I forgot where it was. I don't even have it highlighted in any, any more. Uh, I would check and see if you, there's any stuff that crosses his name, man. Or like butts up against I it. I thought my, it might have been um, down in this area what, where, yeah. where um, Imuna or Faith, right? Faith, Imuna. Look what, what crosses over Faith. Did you type it? Did you check in the Did you type in the beast? Did we check and see if Antichrist is in here at all? Because I mean, listen, if this table is like a a, a a a representation of a timeline, and like you know, we can a, a assimilate because we found two witnesses, and we found plagues, and we found you know gathering of the saints. We can literally like put a finger and go, okay, look at this is where this stuff is happening. So. That would stand to reason that the Antichrist is going to be popping up sooner right, than later. So this is how we would how how we look for that. We, so we just we would look for Abaddon, which is son of perdition, or a pause. Crazy, dude. It's so. Listen, when I was in New Guinea, I did missionary work. I did missionary work way back in 1994, and like the for for one of the first times that I heard his voice in my spirit. I was reading the parable of the when he turned the water into wine at the wedding, right? And how the uh, the banquet guy goes, "Hey, you saved the best for last." Like, wow, right? When I read that, I was at this little church way out in the middle of nowhere on this little island in Papua New Guinea, and it was nighttime, and I was like studying my 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 scripture. And when I read that, like, I got grabbed, and I heard clearly, "Your generation, that's you." Your generation is going to usher in the kingdom. So that I was like 20 at that, 20, 23 or something like that. And that changed my life because I realized like what we are literally here. So, so here we are 20, 20 some odd years later, like we're here, man. It's so exciting. Woo. Sorry. <laughs> Did you see that? It appeared right there. Show me. Right here. <clears throat> Abaddon. Which is really close to Wuhan, but I want to see if it if it, if it was more than once because there may, wow. there's so much in here. Um, see, like, what if that crosses so somebody's name? Seen it, you know what I mean? Where did you check for Obama's name in this thing? No. Did you notice that Bill Gates? Did you see that in the news today? That Bill Gates is coming out with a tattoo that they can tattoo on people that'll tell you if you have had the coronavirus vaccine no i did not yeah or vac vaccines not necessarily the coronavirus vaccine but vaccines in general yeah interesting timing i thought so it's actually there a couple of times um have a dawn. so that's lit okay which is you kind of expect it because we're in the end times. And so there's some that have opinions, some think that it's going to be, it's, it's Obama. Now, here's the thing. The codes will show on a connection to the Antichrist with Obama. But then he's, he goes out of office. Well, still might be him, dude. He could, if some, you know, there's could be some unforeseen things that happen. Um, yeah. That's plausible. But the fact that he went out of office, um, you know, it got to me, thinking there have been many antichrists in history it's a spirit so um hitler had it you know genghis khan had it it's just it's the sons of darkness spirit there's only two either son of light or son of darkness right so that is why we, we see that connection with his name is because it is a reflection of who he is there is no connection of son of light with him. it's son of darkness and so, Abaddon, the beast, all of that is, you know, the spirit behind his nature. It is it at, a, at a point in time, 
that the father appoints when Satan is cast down and he knows his time is short. I don't think that that's actually happened yet, but I do think no. the vessel and its minions are being in place. If that makes any sense. See, but, I think that, that legit, if you look at how that whole thing rolls out, again, going back to Psalms 82, this is when he, he has that little congregation and he says, hey, you're all children of the Most High, but you're going to die like men and fall like one of the princes. That, to me, equates to Revelation 12 when Michael casts them all out once and for all. And then you see in Revelation 13, like, because how does an angel die like a man? Clearly, he gets stuffed into a skin suit, right? So, like, when they get cast out spiritually in Revelation 12, they show up physically in Revelation 13. Because as far as it's my understanding, like, the, the Antichrist is the devil himself in a skin suit. You see what I mean? So by that time, you've had this. And like, if I'm not wrong, we judge the angels. So for me, I can see that, that you know, there's a whole bunch of crazy events that happened prior to that, you know. But I don't, I, there's no way he's been cast down. Another thing that's been very peculiar, people are like, he's already been cast out. It's like, I don't see how that works. Like these kingdoms haven't been given over to our, to Yeshua yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because right. they're still real screwed up. So, all right, just a refresh of what are, what are some of the terms that are here <clears throat> for those that are maybe just new to this. We've got coronavirus as an access term, connecting with Wuhan in the black and red. Right, Wuhan is also here in black and red. Going up. This is also a letter supposed to be with that is. Uh, I don't know why it's not the same color. Um, pandemic in the blue letters. It's sandwiched on top of Wuhan, but also connecting with the word judgment there. But then also connecting in this this anomaly here in these letters, which is uh, the word for the death angel is Mashiachti. Mashiachti. It's very uh, similar to Mashiach. Um, actually, if this yod was between the Samic and the the chet, you got Mashiach. Um, anyway, um, I have found several countries here, many of them uh, in vertical, uh, as we got India and Japan and America, vertical. Uh, America is sharing the comp with Canada, as Canada runs up in this direction in the blue letters. The Dalit in Canada is uh, contagion. And the cough in contagion is the cough of Korea. And um, so there are several terms that are all connected to one another right there. Um, up here in, in this corner, of course, we had originally starting with the resh, cough, um, which was it? resh, cough, chet, mim, we research this, this series of letters here, uh, which were we're looking at a couple things going on because the red letters is um, the word for disease X, <clears throat> but also crossing over that is um, Aleph, Resh, Vong, uh, Pei, Pei, which is the word for Europe. And then, we, of course, death is connected to the word research. So death research, disease X. Um, oh, and there's Abaddon. Look, look at that. That's Abaddon in the blue letters that go across there the same so that's the, the word we, we would look for antichrist that's an associated word with antichrist son of perdition abaddon um the same word that is right here abaddon so like abaddon abaddon yeah abaddon abaddon um however you want to pronounce it uh the panic here's the word for the panic in the white and red um this is going to be really a psychological uh, strain for many people, as it already is probably uh, happening. Um, the stress, the the anxiety of not knowing what is what is taking place. Uh, you know, we see panic happening in people. Um, you know, to doing irrational things like rushing out, uh, and this is herd mentality as well, guys. Just because other people are doing it, you you 
it's like a herd. When, once one starts to gallop, they all begin to gallop. It's like, what are you running from? Okay, we're all running. Why are we running? We're all running. Let's run. Let's run, right? Herd mentality. One may I not start, go by I started the, the toilet paper thing, dude. I started the toilet paper thing. <laughs> Well, it's a global anomaly, brother, because in every country it happened across the board. Now, if we analyze that, that really says something, folks, that the first thing that people run to get to secure in a life and death situation is toilet paper. And so I got other stuff. I got other stuff, too. I got cleaning supplies and stuff like that. But because because we're so paranoid and we've been looking yep. at this forever, like you know as well as I do it was going to be the first thing to go. And we have a bunch of Venezuelans in my building. And I know what happened in Venezuela. They're all crying about toilet paper. So I like, my wife and I, we went to the grocery store. We, I mean, we didn't buy like the whole thing out, but we bought a couple of packs of the family packs. Yeah. And then I posted on Facebook, like, because listen, my peer group, they're not nearly where we're at. Like, you know, they think I'm a psychotic, crazy conspiracy Jesus person. You know what I mean? Which they're totally right about. But like, you gotta break. <laughs> you gotta. You gotta break it <laughs> slowly. You know what I mean? I, so I try. So I like. It was my fun way of telling them, like, hey guys, crap's about to hit the fan. You guys better go out and get some stuff. And I told them, like, do it right. And they all made fun of me. <laughs> And, but, but I'm telling you what, like we were way ahead of this. Yeah. So that's, that's the herd, herd mentality. You know, people may not know why they have to go, you know, why people didn't think I got to go get some hamburger or whatever. I, I don't know. Cause you can't eat toilet paper. And that's why I posted the, the, uh, the meme I did on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any recipes anybody had for cooking toilet paper, I would love to know um, because that, you know, that was strange that it happened globally. So it didn't matter what country, it just seemed to be a thing. There were people rushing out to get toilet paper. Um, it's very, very strange anomaly. Very odd. Um, I think it's the, I think the spirit told me. I think the spirit was like, hey man, go get toilet paper. I, I, everybody should be glad they have toilet paper. Yeah. Well, um, the shelves, no matter where we, it was, they went, they went completely clean of uh, toilet paper. So that you know that can be an indicator. We you can still apply have that to anything. Okay, so apply that to anything in the open market. Okay, let's say medicines, or let's say they they discover um, Tylenol will cure the coronavirus. To, you know, starting when that information becomes official and it breaks. The shelves will go clean up, right? It'll even become something sold on the black market, right? That's that's what happens. Is and many will and will look at it as an opportunity to make money. This is the the, the depth of depravity that some people think. They look at it as a way of you know making a a, a profit off of this. Whether they're selling N95 masks and pushing you to buy it from them. I've seen somebody doing that on YouTube, guys. It's it is very disturbing to see that, that this is what the person is focused and hammering. You got to get these N95s. You got to get these N95s. It's like, what? This person's actually, he went and hoarded a bunch of them and now is selling them on his YouTube channel. Anyway, it's a whole thing. Um, I, I find it interesting the things that happen in the time that we're living in, right? Because even in the time it's very serious and critical, you're going to have people with a, Ulterior and even sometimes malicious motives. Really, to capitalize off the, um, you know, the the seriousness of a situation is uh, disturbing. Anyway, this should be about getting out information and making people aware of, of information and trying to curb the misinformation. In other words, um, being a a truthful reporter reporting things as they are and not sugarcoating them and not bending the truth right just so you don't scare people i would rather know that the ship is going down guys seriously don't tell the band and play on to make me feel better if the ship is going down tell me 
let's come up with a plan, <laughs> right? There's a lot of people that weren't <laughs> aware that their situation was as bad as it was on the Titanic. And it was politics. I, I mean, dude, play. my my plan my plan right now is literally just to seek his face. It's got nothing nothing more than that. Like, as far as I'm concerned, we've crossed the Rubicon. We are literally at the point now where I mean, what does it say? Like two thirds of the whole planet's gonna die. Like, I I think that there's something inside me that tells me. We're never going back to the status quo that was here two weeks ago, ever. Yeah. Yeah. I, never. You know, I, you know? I, I, I think it's that serious. I think it's, you know, it's a game changer. And I think it's an indicator that we are in the countdown, so to speak. And I, listen, don't be fearful, guys. You should be excited that the King of Kings is about to step through the clouds and, and take us to the New Jerusalem because it's a big feast. We're gonna tabernacle with him, guys. That's that's one of the best. That's right. Of his that's seven the best. Months, right. It's. I love that piece. I got married at. at Dude, show Christmas. everyone where it says that the gathering of the saints show, or the chesed. Show them where it says that in this code. That is uh, right here. I mean, it's right there, everybody. It's right there. Yeah. That's like the most exciting thing ever. Yeah. And that's those that have a covenant with him. And you see the covenant there. And incidentally, look what it says in my name, vertical, right there where it says those that have a covenant with me. And, it, and right there at a, at an angle, like a 90 degree angle, that's, you know, in my name. <clears throat> so you see a clustering of uh, some things happening here. You see, this is the second coming verses when we see the Messiah is seen stand over them in the sky. He's seen over them in the clouds, right? He comes and he saves them. This is this is the whole thing about this the second coming of Yeshua. He is all he is coming to save, to 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 gather up to him. Uh, why? Because the enemy is pursuing Revelation 12, the dragon is pursuing the remnant, right? So you go through the wrath of Satan, which is tribulation. It's, it's distress. He comes and saves us from that, right? And who does who does he pun he punishes the wicked and Satan, right? So he saves you from that. So the world is in chaos and in distress when the Messiah comes, and supernatural things are going to be happening, even with his his coming. This is how we know the Messiah is here. But when the Mount of Olives splits, how do you know that? Because there's prophecy, it says will, right? There's a prophecy also in, in uh, Zechariah says that he will be seen over them. Matter of fact, I think that is it right here. Zechariah, let's go look at that. See, I think, I, I, listen, I love you and I think that, you know, I get what you're saying. I personally think the whole thing kicks off and that the, and that the gathering of the saints is that first seal. I think that for me, and then in my studies, like, I think that that gathering happens and that's what sends everything into shockwaves. Like, here's, that's the super kickoff. And I think that, we, like, you need to think about, does this, all this happen in real time? I mean, I know the changing up, we, we change when he gathers at a twinkling of an eye, which it indicates that the flash of, of the speed of light, let's just yeah. say, right? Yeah. But. The light, I think it's a light. I think it's a lightning storm because Yeshua said, "Like when I come, when I come at my when, that when I get revealed, it's going to be a lightning storm from east to west." So I think that that flash of an eye is a lightning storm. So yep. So you think it's in real time? Everything is happening in real time. Like you know, there's no stretch or any warping of. No, time. I, listen. I I think that flat out that that when they're saying safe peace and safety, I think that sudden destruction happens which I personally think is the Father's voice gathering the saints to him. I don't think all the saints get gathered at, the, at, at, or at first. I don't, or the, whatever, how do you say the word again? Chesed, chesed, like the Hebrew word, the Hased. I don't think all the Hased get gathered at first, but I think that there's a, there's a contingency. And I think that like those people who are seeking his face in earnest right now, us, I think that literally we get, pulled up to this congregation that you see in Psalms 84 
And I think that literally we, that's when Paul tells us we judge angels. And I think that literally we judge those angels and we cast them down to earth. But I think at the same time, as all that stuff's going down, however you want to look at it, those two lampstands and those two uh, uh, olive trees, the two witnesses, they are here and I, they're doing stuff. Now, at the, I think that when we get gathered, we go up and we are shouting his name from the heavens. It says the heavens will declare his righteousness. And you can see it all throughout scripture that literally th that those Hasid are given a new song to sing, right? And that, yeah, I think that literally th they're going to see us. And I think that's what provokes Jacob to jealousy is that they see, wait a second, we missed out on this unbelievable thing. Then I, I don't think that we go up and like, I don't think it's, we're going to sit on, you know, the clouds and have graves while we're watching pandemonium unfurl down here. I think that literally, and there are scriptures that say that the, they can see us come and go. So I literally think that it's possible. Now I reserve the right to be wrong. This is just, and this could all be wishful thinking. Maybe we're here. I don't know. Like, but I see this gathering happen and then we are literally in spirit form and we come back actually the whole part about where the uh, revelation 12 when the woman goes into the wilderness and she's carried off on the wings of eagles i literally think that that has something to do with us in our renewed state and i think that we're down here proclaiming him teaching them what we've been taught yeah i could lay it out for you for sure hey jonathan yeah I had this this thought this week, and I feel like it was from the from the rock, uh, mm -hmm. Kodesh, that um, as as um, the seals, like 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 uh, everything was sealed in Daniel's time, and with each seal that's open in Revelation, it's I think that it relates back to that same thing in Daniel. So like there were stuff sealed in Daniel, and then there's stuff opening of the seals in revelation and i yeah. think it's corresponding to um certain they go books together like this by the way. daniel and revelation go together like this and not only that you can you can weave in enoch in there as well they talk about the yeah. same things they, they see the same beast yeah. they, they see the son of man and the ancient of days and you know so it, they, they go together um yeah when they I get a, when, when they're looking at heaven, also with the, the, say, say again, the scriptures being restored, like you know, like uh, I like the the books being restored that were taken away from us. I think it right. all, it's all kind of intertwined. And there's much. More and I was thinking about your about wife books uh, that we don't cover that that they don't teach you in, in churches. Yeah. Parable of the Vineyard does a really good right. job of, of some of these books, like Ezra's and. Um, you know, Jubilees and yeah. some of these others that are just packed full of information. Um, shouldn't say and was, short and not even listen to the audio version. If you don't go and read it yourself, listen to the audio version, which is really easy to do. You can clean your house or if you're driving your car and listen to the yeah. book of Jasher or, or um, Enoch yeah, or whatever. Um, but you'll start to put pieces together you never, you never considered before, right? If you ever read revelation and didn't understand right. it it might make sense to you because if you get another fast another piece from enoch it, it might yeah. make sense so that's how i see daniel and enoch in revelation going together is they they have some of the same information um well some right. say well that's where daniel got his information he was he was stealing it from so and so or you know because enoch prophesied he'd be seen with ten thousand of his saints coming on the cloud well, mm -hmm. Yeshua quoted Enoch, Peter quoted Enoch, and I think it's um, the brother of Yeshua. Um, I can't think of his name, not James, um, Jacob. Anyway. Yeah, and I was thinking too about something that your wife said about, and now I might have the number wrong about, 40 different things being restored and um and i came across um yahweh led me to a, a scripture in exodus and i think he did it in 
in response to some video I did a while back about how it says that we're going to be kings and priests. And we all are like, yeah, we're going to be kings. That's, you know, and we don't even think about that we're going to be priests and we ain't got no clue how to be a priest. And so, you know, I've prayed about that some. And um, so in Exodus 13, it was talking about um, the anointing oil. And it actually lays out what's supposed to be in the anointing oil. And, you know, all my life in church, they're like, oh, it doesn't matter. It's not the oil. It's the prayer of faith, which I'm sure it is. But uh, the, he was specific about what was supposed to be in the anointing oil. There's like uh, five different oils. Look at this is some um, this is some of the um, remnant verses that is running right through um, this cluster over here that we were talking about uh, last broadcast that seemed to be dealing with remnant. But if you look there. Just after, all right, so the yellow verse was the Messiah being, he was seen above them, right? I right, said, so this is Zechariah. But down, we're in Psalms here, where we can see here, which is a bridegroom come out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. He's going forth from the end of heaven, and it's circuit from the ends of it, and there is no, nothing hid from the heat thereof. The exciting, law of man. Israel That's exciting. is perfect. Converting the soul, the testimony of Yahuwah is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes, oh, the statutes of, uh, sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> this is so exciting, man. The this is, like, this is right, amazing. Rejoicing the heart, the commandment of Yahuwah are pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahuwah is clean, enduring forever. The judgments are Yahuwah, of Yahuwah are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than our uh, gold, yea, much better than rubies, more fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned in keeping of them. There is great reward. Who can understand his error? Cleanse me of from secret faults and keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins and let them not have dominion, have over, dominion me. over me and there shall be uh shall i be upright and i shall be innocent from the great transgression and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Yahuwah. so a psalm is this prayer um to the to the redeemer right um in the day of trouble look at here so here we are in this distress very very um relevant psalm you will hear thee in the day of trouble. In the name of Yahuwah, of Jacob, defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings, except thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation. In the name of our Elohim, we will set up our banners. The, the Adonai fulfill all thy petitions. So, and then uh, here's here's the next one in Psalms that JD was bringing up earlier, which is um, 50 and 5 is in the black and red. And uh, this is what it says. Gather my saints unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And all the heavens shall declare his righteousness for you who is judge himself. Down by here is uh, I think 107 of Psalms. Um, so I think he speaks through um, these tables that he 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 puts the chapter and verses that don't normally come together. Like like these didn't normally come together, right? It's because of the cylinder width of this is that we see this stack together like this. But if you read it from line line for line, um, they, they seem to be relevant to, to what we're seeing. And, and all of these, when you take into consideration all of the anomalies together, then it becomes evident that there, this is, you know, more than just random occurrence. This is more than just accident. Monkeys jumping on a keyboard for a million years wouldn't produce something like this, right? So, it's beyond random. 
it's a divine hand. So what does it mean? I believe there's a warning that's that's to be gleaned from. You know, I don't condone predicting the future and things like that from codes, but I do believe that we we can glean wisdom. We can see uh, clear warnings in many cases. As if like, yeah, like can, right you, here, can you check and see if it says Gentiles. can you check and see if it says pray continuously? It'd be interesting to see if it said pray continuously. You know that bit where, where Yeshua says pray continuously that you'll be counted worthy to escape all these things. Yeah. See, I'm I, listen, I'm not one of these people who doesn't think that we're gonna go through a bunch of stuff. I just don't see that we're here when the Antichrist pops up. Like, I think that we're the reason why he's here is because we went up and supplanted him, right? My, my timeline says that he gathers us for the sole purpose of, like, going up and fighting with Michael to bounce them out once and for all. Like, I think that we, I, I don't think Paul was kidding when he says that we're going to judge angels. But you got to figure out where that happens in the timeline. And for me, in my timeline, it makes sense that it happens at that congregation. And it makes sense when when it says like you're gonna you're gonna. It says you know he knows he's got a but but a short time. How does the devil know he's got a but a short time? Because he's been stuffed into a skin suit. He's gonna die like a man, like in, he's like cast in Psalms out eighty two. Huh? He's cast out. He's so he knows. Yeah. He's cast out. But like when he's cast out he's a like when you're cast out dude when you go from that realm to this realm you you got to be in a skin suit right so like in order for an angel to die like a man he's got to become a man you see what i mean but he's not going to be he's not going to go through the womb he's going to inhabit someone who's already gone that's, through the womb. that's exact that, that's exactly right right so that's why all that i think that's why all this gender bending is happening and why you see all these people trying to become genderless is because it says the angels have no sex, right? They're not male or female. So I think that you can see a cause and effect right now happening, right? I mean, doesn't that make a lot of sense? Yes. Yeah, it does. So, and it said he were told it would be like the days of Noah. So, um, and and again, like think about this when it says that you know he's going to fight against the saints. It says that he the, the antichrist is going to be here fighting against the saints. That kind of ties into what I think is going to happen is that we're also going to be back here. I think that literally you can trace it through the Psalms where we get to go up and look around and then it says, go back and tell them what you saw. Go back and tell them, get that next generation ready. Like, I think David was having prophetic dreams or like visions or whatever, True. right? David and Asaph and all these psalmists, I think that literally they were have they were having super duper spiritual experiences. Well, well yeah, um, yeah, no doubt. But like, cause no, dude, most people are like, oh, the psalms are poetry and they're songs and stuff like that. And it's like, no, they're not. They are absolutely not. I think possibly I've read the psalms more than anybody on planet Earth, ever, and I can tell you that the majority of them are not songs. They're not cute little, they're not little cute little poetry. They're literally prophetic visions and dreams. Some are anyway, I, I, I'm very excited. It's a, it's a, it, yeah, it's an exciting time. And that's, that's the thing is if you're fearful, you need to examine what's going on in your life and, and why are you fearful? If it's a, it, the normal reaction should be excited. Um, you know, uh, I'm not excited to see plagues rampage the world and people being sick and things, but I'm excited because I know it's an indicator of the time that we're in. And that's what excites me because I know there's coming a time where there'll be no more sickness, no more tears, right? Yeah will be reunited with those who've gone on before us think about that those that have gone on before us. you know that's what i hold on to because you know you know what i've gone through i'm dead inside i, I don't care i hate this place i'm ready yeah. so we shouldn't be fearful we should be excited about the a, a renewed uh heaven a renewed earth and that's the thing it's not going to be a destroyed earth 
even with wormwood happening, it's not going to destroy the planet. Um, but the Father will use it to purify the planet. There will be a lot of people who uh, who are consumed. For the most part, um, they're not believers. They outright just reject um, the Most High. Um, but we're told that the meek inherit. The meek inherit is the wicked that are, that are removed. We are protected, I believe, personally. It's the New Jerusalem, which is a chamber. It's a it's a place to be hidden until the indignation is passed. I believe it is a physical three days. And I, and I mean this in real time, that when the trumpet sounds, 10 days pass before um, it, it, it culminates to the end. And I mean this because he, he fulfilled the first feast to the literal moment. So if the same is true, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and what he's done before he'll do again, then... When he fulfills these next feasts at trumpets, right, which is Yom Turah, the trumpet sounds. Then we have 10 days of awe. It is very plausible that at Yom Turah, we are raptured up. There again, code searchers said it. At trumpets, this has always been true, guys, that we have found this in the codes, that trumpets is the day of the rapture. No question. When that is, is the question. So when trumpets happen, he, he gathers us up. I believe we are in a in the chambers. We're hiding until the indignation passes for a literal three days. So we're in the New Jerusalem for three days, and then um, there's days of awe remaining. So the rest of the world is getting their affairs in order, so to speak. Because, why? Because judgment is on the Day of Atonement. All right. This is when the books are closed. Incidentally, the books are opened at trumpets. The books are closed at um the day of atonement so and then from there we've got tabernacles is, on the other is side there a, right is there a hebrew word for rapture dude uh the well the the word rapture we get is actually from rapture from the from the from the yeah from the right. so what, what we have in hebrew that is equivalent to that is an agricultural term and it's because we see the gathering of grapes and the gathering, gathering of, of the grapes, yes, of, of wheat, all of this gathering. Tur a I texted you about that just the other day. Okay, so you know, you know, Psalms. When you see the song of a soft, right? That yeah. name, a soft, means to gather. The Hebrew word to gather is a soft, right? So his name means to gather, right? There's another Hebrew word to gather. Um, uh, and it's more of a violent term. It's more like gathering in a kidnapping way. And that's. Sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> this is so exciting. It's this is like, you just lost my place because that's exactly heart 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 what I just did in the video. Enlightening the eyes. The I was fear to see how much longer I got. Enduring forever. The judgments are you who, of you who are true. And righteous it's conversation with him because it's more to be desired than our uh, gold, yea, much better than rubies uh, or fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, like uh, in keeping of them, yes. there is great reward. I don't know who can understand his errors. Cleanse me of from secret faults and keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins and let them. Not have dominion, have over, dominion me. over me. And there shall be, uh, shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in Thy sight, O Yahuwah. So a psalm is this prayer um, to the to the Redeemer, right? Um, in the day of trouble, look at here. So here we are in this distress. It's very very um, relevant psalm. Yahuwah, hear thee in the day of trouble. In the name of Yahuwah, of Jacob, defend thee. Okay. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings, except thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant the appointment. All right, you guys, you could see uh, in the video there, it goes on for a little, it goes on for a while, but it looks like I go into a teaching or something uh, as, as I'm skipping along. 
um, for the sake of time, I'm going to in our class right here, but I will include this this whole video um, if you guys want to watch it to to the completion. But I'm going to post this class on YouTube because this is like like a Yahoo thing, <laughs> guys. Absolutely. I, as Yahoo is my witness, I did not plan this out. We were looking for COVID videos. Actually, I said it yesterday that you know maybe we should go back in time and look at some of the covid videos and see how accurate we were i completely had forgotten that jd was in this i would completely forgotten the conversation we'd had so many conversations you know it just wasn't on my mind but the fact that he pops up in this and then says so many profound things right um man talk about not being a coincidence like it was definitely it was ordained. I believe that too. I believe that too. And I think it's awesome that even beyond the grave, the, my brother is teaching and still ministering. And I think it's awesome. And uh, I really do believe I had an interaction with him in my dream, just as Kaduri had an interaction with Yeshua in his dream, the same kind of concept. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I thought it was all, it was all for a reason, I believe. I just wasn't subconsciously, I don't believe that I was thinking about his marriage anniversary or anything like that. There was a reason why I was thinking about him as soon as I got up, right? And then I sit on my computer and I see uh, Bridget's Facebook post and it's their anniversary. So I immediately go to his timeline and just, you know, spend the day crying <laughs> and, uh, reminiscing about all the times yes also in there i know you've been feeling really guilty and and um kind of awful about everything and he said something really profound to you near the beginning about you know that for a season you teach people and they go on and yeah. you know what i mean yeah it's almost like yeah, to your spirit there about that and just you know what I mean? Your gift and that you're sharing it with people and that it's for a season. And, 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 and if people reject, you know, like he said some profound things there about if people reject yeah. or rebuke you or whatever. So I think it's almost like he's speaking to you from beyond. Right. right. And, and I believe it's because you would knew it was, it's, uh, JD was somebody that, that I, I could I could be on the level with, right? And um, you know, we it was like it was this competing thing where he was trying to mentor me and I was trying to mentor him. But uh, it, it was a a bond, a uh, a fellowship that that formed there where I, I felt comfortable talking with him and sharing with him. And um, you know, we had our arguments just like brothers do, back and forth. And then we'd make up. Um, we disagreed. But we still loved each other and we were still brothers and we didn't let it destroy our relationship, right? So I think you who was using this whole thing in, in my um time in the affliction and, and threshing to to purify some some things, you know, of me. And uh yeah, still doing it today. I, I see with uh this class, and I think it's awesome. I, again, I really didn't expect that to happen. Um completely unexpected and it did it did cause me to, i had to shut off the camera for a moment because i got emotional especially when he was talk when when you're just talking about that leak uh so he was speaking to me at that moment and uh it, it was very powerful so i think i will share this on youtube because uh that that's a really um it's an amazing thing that just happened you guys and i think people should see that and hear the enthusiasm this brother had and uh, his excitement for the name when he finally learned the name. And uh, I agree, Jonathan. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to close the class right here. You guys feel free to fellowship and stay and hang out if you want. I'm going to start the process of getting this um, uploaded. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next class. Um, let me just pause this here.